I posted all the models from last week. <laughs> Amazingly enough, I don't have any downloads. I don't know. Um, it's quality models there too. Are there any more for the bus thing? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked at that. Let's, let's look. Best bus ever. Ooh, yeah. We have an entry. Matt R. Hmm. Tie dyed it. Weird. And made it, uh, got it doing a wheelie thing. Ooh, okay. Now a we're little, talking. little Fredo distortion, got a little cartoony bend to it. It's, uh, it's all right. All right, got a couple people coming in already. Hey guys. We will be starting momentarily. to watch an ad before you get to see anything on Twitch. It may happen. Hello, Hazel. Hello, Biker Mouse. Hello. Uh, Abdel. Abdel, of course. Hello, Jorge. Vivian. More Jorge. Massigo. Hello. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. YouTube like thing says the stream health is not fully strong. Not not healthy health. Twitch one looks good. Oh, uh, thanks, Ty. Watching over on Twitch says he likes my pin. Ah, yes, and Ty let me borrow his hand of the king pin. King pin. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> so Bill Murray. In here. That's right. Oh, I hope that's okay. The stream thing. Um, I'm looking at it on YouTube right now. It looks okay. Okay. We'll see. I'll give him another minute. Is this resolution is weird. But that's not. I'm going to stop streaming. We'll be back in just one second. Yeah, it's Should creepy. Have like you seen some kind of uh, weird uh, visual effects? Try refreshing the stream. Like, gonna see ghost faces creep out of that or something. <laughs> Come at me. Uh, nope, still got it. Let's see what's going on on Twitch. Oh. Whoa. 
Hi, uh, sorry, if you can hear us, folks, we're trying to sort out the... Quality. Everything? Yes. So just give us a moment here. Oh, it's gone from Twitch. Oh, oh there it is. Still green. Well, it's certainly not a good looking stream. Oh. Wait, here's stuff. That's that's plus. All right, we're gonna model by sound today. <laughs> yeah. Where I can look away glitches and sketch. <laughs> look away from your screens and uh, you just hear these mouse clicks and know that stuff's getting drawn. Oh, it's looking good already. Okay, not really. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, things will be up and running in just a moment. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop the stream and hopefully uh, get some stuff changed and restart it. So uh, we'll go offline for a second, and uh, if you can try refreshing in uh, 30 seconds or something, that hopefully will get sorted out. So sorry about this technical glitch, but we're working on it. So thank you guys. Okay, so the stream, I can see the stream on Twitch now. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's check the tube. Live stream offline. Uh, for some reason, when I was doing the YouTube last time, it took like 30 seconds to show up in there after I started. Okay. YouTube dashboard looks like it showed up on there now. So, all right. 
Yay! We got things going on YouTube. YouTube, yes. Twitch. Um, commercial. Twitch. If you can, if you can believe that. Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes reality happens. Yeah. This is annoying. Okay. Well, looks like we're there. Um, I think it's all good to go, so I know that you all have your All right. Um, okay. Did our numbers come? Did people come back? Um, yeah. Let's right. see. Okay. 29 YouTube right now. Cool. Uh, like five on Twitch? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I think people will start. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, meandering in once the thing comes back. Cool. Um, so I just wanted to start off with... I, uh, I have lost my... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I'll guide you. Unless you want to try. Okay. Going over. More left, more left. We're back. How's everybody doing? Sorry about that. Happy Friday. We'll turn this music off. This is uh, music that was not copywritten. It sounds something like something, but uh, it sounds it just music that we decided to play. Yeah. Is it? It's looty. It's kind of got that <laughs> medieval feel. I could see somebody sharpening a sword to that song. Um, it's medieval heavy metal right there. Yeah, we made it. We came back. Sorry about that that uh, that thing, guys. Fortunately, happened right at the beginning. We got it out of the system, ready to go. So hope everybody's having a good Friday. Um, that's my only Good Friday joke I'll make. We're there when we passed. All right, so Friday afternoon with SketchUp. Hope everybody's doing good out there. Um, just want to throw a little tickler. We do have that design competition going on right now, Best Bus Ever on 3D Warehouse. If you go up there and search the term Best Bus Ever, all one word, you will get our uh, original bus that I uploaded um, from our live stream. And the idea is you download it, you modify it to make it your kind of bus, and then you put it back up there and possibly win some prizes or accolades or respect or something. You win something. Um, right now, it looks like we have one person put up a uh, Matt R, is that right? Matt R, I think. Got his up there, tie-dye bus, pretty mm, sweet. Does it look cool? It looks very cool. I should, you know what, we should, instead of talking about this in theory, when we can actually look at it. Right. So close your eyes and imagine if you will. No, let's look. All right, so if we come up to 3D Warehouse and search best bus ever. Make sure I spell it right, here we go. It's called Later Dudes. Ooh, that does look very cool. That is pretty cool. So that's that's entry number one. There are a couple others up there. We'll just let, let me show you this too. So we do have one here where uh, Red C130. He's on here sometimes watching us stream, but uh, he uploaded a version in uh, 2016. So it's the same model, but it's available for anybody who's running 2016 and has a. Really, it's just a very a good looking uh, scale figure in the front of it too. That's so that's that's the winner of my book right now. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, there is this this other thing that says city, which this is one of those weird coincidences, I guess. This is a file that was uploaded in 2014 and is tagged hashtag best underscore bust underscore ever. Um, Apparently, I did not do my due diligence and search for that tag because I figured, who's going to tag something best bus ever? But apparently... Or this uh, person had the second sight and was able to yeah, they, project in 2014 that you were going to do this challenge. Unfortunately, they didn't use the original model in their design, so can't win. Well, they did. They just downloaded it and then deleted it. That's, that could be. And then drew some, so, some cylinders. So, yeah. So, we'll keep checking in on this. Um, get your model up here. We'll throw it up and uh, 
we will uh, keep keep an eye on these entries as they come in. It'll be our fun. Uh, so we, that's the way we'll kick off our Friday afternoons. All right. Now that that's been kicked, and we're off, we are going to take a shot at modeling the Iron Throne, that's which right. is a very. Uh, <laughs> it's back. Whew, get me pumped. All right. Get loody with it. Um, <laughs> very identifiable. I have been asked to point out that we're ident or we are modeling the Iron Throne from the HBO show and not the Iron Throne from the actual books, which is bigger and scarier and really awesome. And they're both awesome looking. But uh, I, I, I was told to, to mention that. So thank you, Ty. Hi, over on uh, watching with watching us on Twitch. So I'm gonna start into this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and import an image to start with, and I grabbed a couple of, of images. Uh, a lot of the images that I grabbed actually are from uh, props or or like uh, official reproductions, that sort of thing. The images of the real throne I was able to find are either being sat in by somebody who's doing a photo op type thing, or they're lit with like fire and darkness. I don't know if you can light with darkness. <laughs> Heavy shadows, like I said, where they didn't show up real well. Um, so these were the best images I could come up with. If anybody's out there and comes up, if you guys, if you guys have a line on a good one, go ahead and throw the link in the comments, and uh, hopefully you can... Uh, if, it, if it's a good, helpful one, we'll, we'll grab it and use it here. All right, so before we go a whole lot further, I have to come clean on something. I'm not much of a Game of Thrones watcher. I've seen an episode or two. I read the first book, but uh, I really haven't gotten into it. So I'm hoping that through this process, maybe I can impart to you guys a little education entertainment around SketchUp modeling, and you guys can fill me in on Game of Thrones because I really don't know a whole lot about it. I mean, I've seen pictures, I've seen, this is pretty awesome, I've seen this before, but I really just haven't, I don't know, haven't gotten into it. I, but you read I the first know. book, so you know, <laughs> you know some of the characters. But well, the first book came out like... 30 years ago or something, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know if it's that old, but I mean, yeah. I, I watched it, I think I watched it before, I think there's like the rumblings of the show. Ah, Tom, Tom just spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> well, might as well quit the stream. Um, <laughs> there, I think when I read it, I heard that HBO or the, the series was just starting or something like that, and I needed a book to read and thought that would be a fun one, so I grabbed it and read it. Mm -hmm. Um... And here's my observation of the book. I struggled a little bit with the book because the first couple of chapters talk about Ned, who you guys already probably know who that is. I didn't when I started reading the book because I was just starting to read the book. Sure. Um, and the first one's from his point of view, and I forget the second chapter's like from someone else's point of view that refers back to Ned but by a different name. And the third Ed chapter... Art. Was that? Ed Art. Could be, could be, yeah. And then the third chapter talks about the twins, and they talk about him, because there, there's enemy. They have a whole other name for him. So I, I was like, four chapters in this book before I realized that these three or four characters I thought were different people. It turns out they're actually just one guy. So <laughs> that was my experience with the book. I did read the whole thing, and it was kind of, it, it was good. It was a good story. It was long. It was, it was a lot of stuff, a lot of characters, and I've, understood that as it goes by there's just more and more characters they do fortunately do a cleansing every once in a while and wipe out a handful of people it sounds like but yes <laughs> you guys feel free to inform me and and hopefully i'll absorb some knowledge on on got as i impart knowledge on su to you so all mm -hmm. right with that we're gonna hop in here um nice <laughs> All right, so I grabbed, like I said, this is a, a scaled down image, um, or, or a scaled down model replica 
of of the Iron Throne. But if you look at it, if you look at the real one, it is kind of all smushed together. There's not real good definition. Everything is kind of it's supposed to be made from what, a sword for every lord of something or other. Lord or, swords. They're lord. They're lord swords. Hmm. Um, it's a load of lord swords. It is a lot, oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I won't go any further because, as we discussed, don't not. Um, it's a lot of swords. It's it actually, if you look at it, it looks like it is a terribly uncomfortable seat to sit on. Yeah. But I guess there's some importance to it. That's really the, the part that matters. Hmm. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna be straightforward. I'm not going to try to make this a solid. I do like to generally make solids. You guys probably know that. Um, but there's going to be so many different pieces here. I could probably spend the full three hours merging everything and cleaning up. So I'm not even going to, not going to mess with the solid. Um, but I do want to make a cool model. So we won't worry about solids. Um, other than that, I'm going to try to get as much of this detail in here as I can, and uh, we're just going to hop right in. The other thing, the one, uh, probably the bigger thing than the solids thing is I'm going to try to keep this a fairly manageable size model. Um, I could go in and we could model a whole lot of detail in each of these handles and stuff. We could actually have these blades taper this direction and kind of fold over and give them points. All that. We could actually go into a whole lot of detail just there and we'd end up with several million faces just in the first couple swords. So I'm gonna do what I can to make this look good, but still be a snappy, uh, well-performing model. So million faces sounds like Arya Stark, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I know like a little bit about, I feel like I've seen every episode once, so I know like, I remember some stuff here and there. Anyways, there's faces in it. Uh, <laughs> so, and probably lines as well, edges. Um, in the show. Go ahead. Sorry. I just, I'm sure there is. <laughs> um, we are. Uh, I'm not. Somebody just asked about quad modeling. My plan is not to do a lot of quad modeling on this. Swords are pretty. I mean, unless we're getting into some weird shapes, swords are really pretty basic shapes. So I mean, we'll we'll do kind of extruded rectangle and maybe put some points on. Um, I honestly haven't, haven't had a chance to really think a whole lot about how this is going to go together, so we'll figure that out right now. Um, I'm going to be grouping a whole lot here. So for, first one, let's just, let's just get in here and draw a sword. Less talky, more swordy. So it looks like right here, and if you guys have more extensive knowledge and have done more analysis of the Iron Throne, please feel free to throw that my way as well. What we got right here is a sword. Looks like this, uh, the central spike right here is a sword going down, and then there's a little handle here. So I'm gonna model this as our first sword. Um, I'm gonna put a line like that, and then I'm just gonna draw, to start with, uh, just kind of a 2D shape there. That, oops, gonna come down like that. Um, I'm not even use a circle. I'm gonna stay lower poly than that even. I'm gonna create, no, I'll create a circle, but I will create it out of, uh, let's create an eight-sided circle. Again, just to keep it low polygon right now. So here is, let me make that a group. I'm gonna slide that over. Oh, something I gotta point out. You may have noticed, I'm still on the, uh, the little guy, the little, hey buddy, how you doing? Little 3D mouse. The big 3D mouse has officially eaten it, I think is the technical term. So it does not work. I worked with 3D Connections, try to help me to get it to work, kind of troubleshooting that kind of thing, but they have, uh, we've, we've all given up. So that, sort of, that one is gone for now. Hopefully I have a new enterprise soon, but right now 
I'm uh, onto just the regular space mouse. So that's cool. It's cool. Still works. Works great. But uh, I'm definitely uh, might be stumbling over some missing shortcut keys at some point. Um, all right. So I'm gonna come in here, and uh, I'm gonna use move. Just move this point straight up a little bit. That looks all right. Um, so again, in the interest of keeping this fairly low polygon, I might do something like this. Um, I'm going to take this piece right here, and with auto fold, I'm going to move it out. that. That gives me a little bit of a raise. I can, I can scale that back down and stuff as I, as I go to. Um, so basically what I want to tr try to do right now, there's a quarter of the blade. Let's go ahead and solid that up. Ooh, what's going on back there? Didn't quite, I might have missed a point there. Close that up. There we go. I missed something. All right, so again, just kind of getting some base geometry. I'm going to temporarily uh, I'm gonna make that a component. And I'm going to call this the quarter blade. Ooh, that sounds like, it's like a cool weapon for a guy who hangs out in an arcade. The quarter blade. Nice. All right, same thing over here. Uh, for right now, I am just going to pull that out like that. Um, put a circle, actually. Copy of that like that, and then a circle right here. Again, I'm going to stick with my low poly circle, my uh, eight sided circle. Pull that down this way, pull this out. Take all of that and mirror that with the option key to make a copy. Something like that. All right, I'm gonna pull this down so it intersects. I'm gonna grab both these surfaces, right click, intersect face with selection. So I said I'm not worried too much about maintaining uh, solids. Sometimes you just can't help yourself, so and this right now is coming close to solid. One of the nice things about solids when I'm modeling a single piece like this is just that I can use those uh, intersect and I could use solid tools, that kind of thing too. But right now it's not really necessary so much as it's just what I'm doing because I'm doing it. All right, let's flip along the red axes. I gotta be honest. I still celebrate a little bit inside every time I flick, flip along correctly, so <laughs> forgive me for that little, little indulgence I give myself every time I flip along. All right, that looks pretty cool. Um, come back here and clean this up. Just touch. I'm going to explode these. I don't need them to be separate now. So there's half a sword. I'm going to use this pommel to just orient faces and get the, the white facing out. I'm going to smooth some stuff at this point too. Don't have a shortcut key over here. Option, control to smooth there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, that's a sword. All right, that's half of a sword. I'm kind of debating using this. There's really no swords other than the ones that are on 
around here, these, this first set, you're only gonna see the front half of them. So I don't know if there's a good reason to model. I'm looking at the back of the same image right now, which I just caught that I'm doing that. <laughs> yep. Circle it's, around behind. It's very and similar to the front. Thing. Ooh. Takes opportunity to save. Um, but if I come out here and look at this back, yeah, they're all buried in on the back. You can't see anything. So I am not, I'm just going to, I'm going to model with half a sword. I'm going to do it. I don't even care. Sweet. Cool. So that makes this pretty much a done. All right. Going to grab that right here. And I'm going to stick that up like that. That's going to be my first sword. First sword down? Down. <laughs> Celebratory music. <laughs> um, Maricone asked about um, how you feel about different 3D mice, like that one versus the your old big boy that you've used. And um, Absolutely. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, um. Yeah. Honestly, once it, once you get used to using a 3D mouse moving around, I think the two big advantages are it's, I mean, it just becomes kind of second nature. And for presentations, you guys seeing this, it just ends up being a lot smoother. So in that aspect, I think it's great. It's kind of hard to beat. Um, it's It really is a good way to uh, present is with 3D mice. I think for me, I think I also design a little quicker. I do do a lot of stuff with just my mouse still. I don't want you guys to think that if you just have a three button mouse, you're not gonna be able to design as good enough or quick enough. I absolutely do a ton of work with just my mouse all the time. Um, this really, I would really qualify this as kind of a, more of a nice to have than a must have. Um, it wanders into must have territory if you're wandling, want, or modeling daily. Um, honestly, I have felt zooming's a big part. Um, I've gotten that little, achy bit right here when you do this a whole lot and move oh, that yeah. middle finger up and down. I've gotten to the point where I got that little little bit of an ache and this takes half of half of a mouse clicking away. So I imagine there's probably something good there. The big difference, obviously the way that the, the puck works, everything is the same on a, on a standard space mouse versus an enterprise. The big difference is in the enterprise is all the shortcut keys, which have already clicked or already tripped me up because I tried to go hit my uh, option key, which is right here <laughs> on the mouse I don't have. Um, so really, as far as investment, it's a big difference, 100 versus $400. Um, and it really comes down, like I said, how much designing do you do? If you're designing eight hours a day, five days a week, 52 weeks a year, then you may see enough of an advantage that it's, it's worth doing. The problem with using a space mouse is it does take your hand away from your shortcut keys. So most time when I design and I have just my mouse, my hands are like this. So I'm, I'm hitting shortcut keys and modifier keys over here with my left hand, right hand's doing all the mouse work. When I have a space mouse, my hand comes over here, but now I lose my shortcut keys. So I do have to hop back and forth like this. Having those buttons there, again, if it's an all the time thing, kind of nice. All right. Um, Yeah, we don't sell cracked software. We sell real software. Yeah. Don't ask. <laughs> um, all right, so I got this one sword in. And uh, what I'm going to do is this is not a symmetrical thing. So I, I don't want to go in and just model uh, half of it and have it lay over. You guys can see there's kind of interweaving of swords, so I am going to go back and forth and do the whole thing. But this central piece back here is pretty similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by kind of creating one half of these tips as they come down. And it looks like what actually happens if you look between this one and the... I already, I already closed it. If you look between the front and the back, 
it kind of looks like, like what happens is the first one's upright like this because you can actually see the pommel and the handle in there. And the next one kind of looks like it maybe laps behind and comes forward a little bit. And it kind of creates this uh, rounded, it's not, it's not flat, it's actually kind of comes around this way. So I'm gonna see if I can create something like that. This may end up being the Aaron Iron Throne <laughs> by the time we're done. We'll see, inspired by the HBO Iron Throne. So I may throw that card out and say I was coming up with my own thing if this, yeah. <laughs> this doesn't work well enough. Throne. Iron Throne. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna use the same sword for this. And I'm just gonna right now, I'm gonna copy a couple of these down. All right, something like that. And I'm going to also rotate them from the tip, from that tip point. I'm just gonna rotate them back, whoops, on the flat surface. That's kind of cool looking already. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna grab some more option. Copy. And rotate those as well. Have you guys been watching the new, uh, do we have any huge Game of Thrones fans on right now? You guys, uh, Loving it, hating it. What's what's the general consensus of the uh, Friday afternoon crew? What do you guys think of uh, Game of Thrones season something? Um, Damn, that sucked. Six. Six? Yeah, what season is it? How's that? Who knows what season it is? <laughs> oh, so bad. People love it. Love it. Die Hard fan. Uh, Season eight. Eight, of course, yes. All right. Is that why you're using eight-sided circles? That's exactly why Matt got that. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Totally Good intentional. Season seven. <laughs> Boy. All right. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these. So I like the way they fan, they fan out, that looks good. I'm gonna try to get that, like I said, the, the roundness of the back of the, the throne. So I'm gonna do this by going to rotate with all the blades except for the first one, the top one selected. I'm gonna snap straight up and I'm gonna give these just a little bit. Let's see what a two degree uh, rotation looks like. Then I'm going to turn off that first one, rotate again. Again, two degrees. Keep, whoops. Rotate again. Um, keep hitting the option. I don't know why I'm trying to copy these pieces, but I don't want to. See how that's looking so far. It's pretty subtle. I think it's gonna work though. I don't want to be. I don't want to be, you to be uncomfortable when you're upon the Iron Throne, right? Yeah. No, it's all about subtlety when you're. <laughs> when you're sitting on a sitting on the sword made. Dead man's weapons. Do. So where do these swords all come from, you guys? Uh, that's these. These are the kind of questions that I have as a non-GOT watcher. Hopefully, I can say GOT, not being a watcher. Um, I think you're allowed to do that. Okay. Yeah. Where Where are these swords from? Are they actual swords from like warriors that were trampled over by the 
the monarchs of old? Are they just for show? Did somebody? Yeah, somebody help me out some here. Some blacksmith was just hired to. <laughs> Crap! I got no raw materials, but my swords aren't moving. Make it look mean. You know, make it look a little, a little rough around the. <laughs> Thanks for backing me up, Dwayne. <laughs> uh, all right. So there, you know what, that looks, uh, that's, I, don't, I don't know, it's almost too much. Um, I have a feeling swords have to go in front of this too. So I kind of feel like that came out a little bit too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push some of these backwards. And I am straight up sculpting right now. I don't know. What kind of size dimensions anything I'm using? I'm just moving. Uh, swords from past kings, perhaps. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, I don't know. A lot of kings, man. That is, that's a mess of kings. Ooh, they were welded together by the last living dragon. That explains it. See, I thank you guys. I appreciate that because I was looking at it going, man, it seems like HBO could have put a little more effort into this thing and made it look a little more, uh, but because it, it looks like a big monolithic chunk of stuff, but if it was welded by a dragon, I mean, I buy that. Yeah, they're not known for their precision in the <laughs> welding. For precision welding. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So I got, I'm sorry, I forgot to say it by Mark. All right, so there is some swords. So like I said, just, well, let's see. Something else I might do right now. Take this one and bring this one out just a skoosh. And uh, I think I'm gonna come into these and maybe get rid of too much. Probably should have thought about this first. Um, getting rid of the hilts. Really, really, really should have done that first, yeah. Um, Cause they're gonna get in the way. So I'm gonna try to kind of push that back there. I think what may end up happening is I may end up with kind of a uh, create a little bit of a monolithic chunk in back for it to go uh, kind of connect to. But those hills, I, it's extra geometry, I don't need, I'm gonna cover it all up anyhow, so I'm gonna go into Gapona Edit, click on Hide Rest and Model, that way I can real quickly just come through here uh, and delete this stuff out. Um, Smethy X said he only knows the sword named Oathkeeper. And that is a very cool sword, and perhaps if you have time, you can model a little bit of that afterwards. All right. What was the what was uh, Ned's big head lopping sword? What was the name of that one? Anybody, anybody got that one? Something about um, ice or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ned sword, ice maker, ice cutter, <laughs> uh, ice pick, snow cone. Um, I just remember. <laughs> He had that, and then uh, you know he goes off to execute that dude in the beginning. And spoiler, episode one. Um, I just remember it had a cool sounding name, and not just a cool sounding name. Actually, this is here's a story I'm gonna tell. Um, my cousin has a letter opener of the sword, so I know it has a name because I've heard him mutter it because he. Holds it aloft before he opens mail with it. <laughs> uh, it's Valerian steel, I believe. So I know that much about it. I buy it. I buy it. That sounds sounds just so crazy. It must be true. All right. Really should have done this beforehand. Okay, we're there. Last one. Last sword. Cool. All right. Now we have. Just blades to model with, 
and uh, one with a hilt that we can copy for all this kind of stuff. All right, I am going to take all of this, everything except for that one. I'm gonna make a group of that. I'm going to copy it over here. You scale to flip it. And I did something dumb. I'm gonna undo, undo. I'm gonna come back into this one. And I, I need a reference point. So I'm gonna come in and give myself a reference line right here inside the group. That way when I copy this over, use scale to flip it. I can grab it by that point right there and plop it right on there. All right. Looks okay, but I think I'm gonna do something like this. Lean it back a little bit. Looks like a little, little uptight right now. Good. Yeah. Be able to chill in that chair. I wonder if it has like the hydraulic you can change the is it hydraulic? I don't know. You know, change the, adjust the height and yeah. stuff or the lumbar like, support. Like an office chair? This yeah. is like this is this is king sit here. It's not gonna be some schlocky chunk of metal. Right, yeah, for sure. It's gonna be ergonomic. It's gonna be comfortable for anybody to sit in. All right, dimension C160 Delta. I have a love-hate relationship with Flip Along. It is a good tool, but I'm just learning to use it. That's, that's where I'm at. That's exactly 100% why I did not use it, because I need to be better at using it. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's keep moving. All right, so if I... I actually want to put this right back where it was. And then I'm just gonna slide it over. And look, okay, so it looks like we got this second row of blades, kind of all the same height. One, two, kind of, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this, these two, and I'm gonna copy them vertically at first. And bring them forward. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and rotate them again and use the tip because I'm going to assume the tip, whoop, yep, help me. You ever have that happen where the little, the little, so your button has a little bit of travel, right, in the mouse button? Yeah. And uh, every once in a while I'll move it up to something and it will prevent me from pushing. I think that a MacBook is like oh. exactly the right height to prevent you from clicking. So I don't know if that was a design intention, just to screw with users, but <laughs> if, you, if you move a Logitech mouse right up against the edge of a MacBook, it's a safety, yeah, you can't click. Um, and I think I just found out that, yep, I can get onto that too, and uh, yeah, that's fun. That's, that's a more you know moment. Yeah, it's a new. Every single day. That's right. All right, so we'll rotate that down. There we go, falls back behind. And uh, I'm gonna take that right now. Actually, here's, ah, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna just do this. I wanna find out where the center lines of these two swords meet. There we go. And I'm going to, from that point, rotate out a couple more blades. Of course I don't, if I do this, so I can't, I can't align to align with my, uh, my compass, right? So when I come in to rotate right now, I don't have something to connect to, but if I draw just one line across here, that gives me a surface. That surface is in plane with those swords. So I can come in here and go snap there, and then I can go option and rotate out another one. And it's, it's, it kills me. I really like doing, uh, you know, kind of very precise design. Not, not very precise, but I like, I like symmetry. I like numbers that are 
line up together. So I am accepting that uh, as I do this more and more, I need to embrace the fact that uh, stuff's not going to line up perfectly. So I'm, I'm going to try to do that. Embrace the chaos. Awesome. Um. All right, we're getting there. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to copy that one and put it right up here. Did anyone ever come up with Ned Sword? What was, it, what was the name of that? Yeah, what is Ned's sword? Question to the comment section. YouTube, Twitch. Somebody out there knows it. You guys gotta know, right? Or is season one too long gone? Oathbreaker, anybody buy that? I can't tell you if you're right or wrong, so. <laughs> Widowmaker is the twin sword that the Lannisters own. Oh, okay. 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 Oathbreaker. Of course, we've heard about Oathkeeper. Oh. They giggled it. They giggled it. They checked Googled. it out. Oathkeeper. Oathbreaker. That's pretty ice. cool. A little yin yang. This person said it's called Ice. Ice. That's what I remember. Which is. Perhaps yeah. it's known by many different names. That's true. Well, heck, Ned had, as I just discussed, Ned had a handful. I didn't know who he was. All right. Um, we got to fill this out a little more. Um, let me bring these guys in a little. Um, I did not. Somebody was asking about using components for the swords. I really don't have the intention of making these swords all the same. Um, actually, as we as we look in here, I'm kind of already thinking we need to do some stuff like click into this one and pull it down so it gets out of the way more. Uh, not really thinking again, and with the with the swords where we actually put the hilts on and they end up in here, they are mostly different. There's some similarities, but they're all different. So I'm not really concerned about making one sword. Uh, and then having it all, you know, uh, just using that one one component over and over again. Um, speaking of which, so as I'm doing that, some of these pieces, so the back swords are running into the front sword, so just now, rather than going any further, I'm just going to real quickly double click in, push pull to push that up. Again, even though I'm not worrying about making a solid, what I want in the end is kind of a monolithic chunk of geometry. Do you like that word? Monolithic? An MCG, monolithic chunk of geometry. Natch, of course. Um, so that one. I might try to hide that real quick. I'm gonna hide that by grabbing this guy and using move. One of the things that shows up, of course, when you click on move, is you get those uh, those handles that allow you to. Uh, rotate without picking points to rotate from. Wow, oh, man, I love those handles. They're, they're my, some of my favorite handles. So I'm just clicking through here, making, making some solid geometry. Not, not solid like solid, but solid kind of geometry. And I'll push that one back up and cover it again with this guy. Uh, Lannister so. gave his grandson Joffrey Baratheon this sword, forged from Ned Stark's melted down Valerian steel. Joffrey named it Widow's Whale. It like beheading Ned each time he took a swing. What do you know? That's some grim stuff right there. Widow's Whale. It does, uh, it does paint a picture. <laughs> uh, those whales be widowing. Mm -hmm. Those widows be wailing. <laughs> That's actually Oh, important. it's widow. 
they spelled it whale like as in like scream but you're saying it's whale yeah. as in like a no i was thinking i was thinking w a i l <laughs> yeah like a yeah exactly sure, a, a poor female whale that has lost her her whale man mm-hmm. man Just whale sitting there making lonely whale calls And that's the kind of quality you can come to expect on Friday afternoons. <laughs> All right, so I got a pretty good base here of some, uh, I believe this end of the sword is called the sticky bit. So we're gonna come in and throw some of these guys in here. Again, I'm not looking to uh, use a component make these all the same, but I'm just going to start by throwing in this same sword over and over again, and then we can hop in here and throw details into the pommels or the handle or whatever once we get that, the first piece in place. So I'll take this one and I'm just going to Ah, my mouse is messing with my buttons. Alright, I'm just going to stick it over here. I'm going to throw in this guy right here. Let's see, where should I grab it from? I'm going to grab it from a back piece like that. I'm thinking this guy right here uh, kind of goes like right here-ish. That's not bad. Um, I'm going to have to rotate it though. When you use these handles, you are rotating around the center point of the group. So they say it's nice because you don't have to come in with a uh, precision piece. I don't have to find exactly like a, a, a piece to rotate from. Mm -hmm. um, but you do, uh, I guess the double-edged sword. Nice. You <laughs> gain some ability. It's simple. It's quick and easy to, to rotate that, but you don't have a, you can only rotate about the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna uh, just, for this application, um, it's right. okay. You don't right. have to be super precise. Exactly. So this is the, uh, the sculpting workflow I enjoy so much in SketchUp rather than the uh, precision modeling, which is also great. I'll take that one and I'm going to rotate it from here. Here, another with with my copy. Oops, lost it. Those are actually a little bit. in a bit, and slide it over a bit. Um, so one of the things I like to do as a model, when I go to move stuff, this is something a lot of beginners try to always click on a point to a point, and that's nice, again, if you got the opportunity to do that kind of precision. If you don't, uh, clicking out an open space to move your from and to points is a, uh, a key. Take that one and rotate her a bit and slide it back just a bit. One of the problems with grabbing these spaces off in the middle of nowhere is like that. It's so far away and it's not giving me a, a real precise move. So sometimes I'm going to just grab a spot on this piece right here. There we go. That'll work. Kind of just putting some of these. It's basically a, an array of sword hilts is what I'm looking for right now. Coming down. All right. So 
So what I'll do, I'll get these ones kind of lined up the way I had the other ones lined up. These actually step down quite a bit more. So one of the things that I was thinking about early on, so there was, there was two ways I considered doing this. One was more uh, tongue in cheek, was to model a chair and then uh, just grab component spray, <laughs> and spray swords all over it, <laughs> just, to, just to see what we came up with. Um, that of course would not have looked anything like the Iron Throne, but it would have been kind of a fun little practice. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, yeah, I want to see that later on today. Yet, um, the other thing I was considering was modeling this kind of more straightforward, and then using Fredo scale to come in and kind of add the curves and that kind of thing. I like that idea. That 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 actually would have been maybe kind of cool. Downside would have been everything would have been warped. There would have been no straight edges, and I kind of think that's one of the cool things about this is uh, a lot of these are interweaved straight pieces so that's that's really cool um, it is really a cool thing so I didn't want to I didn't want to mess with that aesthetic of the throne all right so Come along. All right, I'm going to grab these three, slide them over here, flip along the red axes, slide them right back in. Something like that. All right, this sword's in my way now. Anybody out there do a lot of uh, fantasy type modeling? You guys, guys uh, got any, got any sword makers? Well, you know, sword makers like this kind of thing, sword makers. Anybody build a lot of, a lot of or any fantasy weapon type things? Well, I can say I don't. All right, that's one no. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I suppose you could also make um, like medieval towns or something like that, some kind of, right? Yeah. The old, old inn. Um, uh, of course, the well that nobody's used for many years. Um, Let's see what else would you have? You got the, of course, you got the castles. Yeah, wow. castles are fun. I know I've seen some sweet castles up on Warehouse. Mm -hmm. So people are modeling that. Ooh, D and D. Yeah, definitely get some D and D. Yeah, I've seen some really cool models for uh, D and D stuff. Like the miniatures that you paint, or whatever. Yeah, I've seen some of those. Right. There's some some definitely some cool stuff out there. Hello, L Tell Baby. Thanks for watching. I thought you were throwing that in there, like, hey, hey Matt, baby. Like, I didn't. The the baby's actually part of the title oh, there. Yes. I thought you were just a. Uh... I would never say baby without <laughs> reading it. What if it was a baby? You know, then you'd be okay, right? Hey, baby. MS Physics. Yes, thank you, Alan, for your suggestion. We have, uh, I've put it into our list, and we are um, perhaps going to show it on a future episode. Yes, that that's one. We've had quite a few, quite a few people have asked about that. Um, MS Physics is awesome. Just throw that out there. Really like it. It is definitely not something you wade into without uh, making a little bit of a plan.
All right, so at this point, you guys, I am really just using a whole lot of moving. That's like the number one command I've used here. Uh, just trying to get these to weave in and out without too much of this kind of thing. So this right here, we got this crossing over, crossing through. I'm trying to pick those spots out and use move to maybe get it so one stands out in front of the others. Or also with move, of course, I was talking about using the rotate to bring these pieces up and lapping in back of each other. Awesome. Oh, cool. Kyle said he uh, used the end scape there and then does the kind of real time uh, for D&D &D and then uses the real time rendering thing to kind of have like a rendered little Oh, awesome. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's very cool. Um, and also a Rube Goldberg machine. That's something that we have on our list, I believe, as well. We got the... We somebody do. Somebody last stream said Mousetrap. And we're like, oh, yeah, Mousetrap. That like sounds... Kind of Rube Goldberg thing would be awesome. That sounds like a blast. That sounds... Uh, it's a lot. I was thinking, like, how many pieces are in a Mousetrap? It's, it's like... I don't know, I'll say 20 pieces, something like that. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, well, some of them are pretty simple. I mean, there's not a whole lot to some of those. Um, but yeah, I think that would be, that would be a lot of fun. But the joke about Mousetrap, obviously, is it takes, you know, an hour to set up, and then by the time you <laughs> set up, you're like, well, I don't even want to play this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. There's some rotate this one, too. Cool. So yeah, I appreciate you guys, you guys keep those ideas coming because obviously there's no shortage of things in the world that we could model, but modeling things that you want to see is kind of key. Whew, that's getting there. It's getting there some. Yeah, that looks good. Really feeling like some of these guys right here need to be a little more... Uh, Longer and pointier. I'm just gonna grab these and hit scale and make them make them longer and pointier. What exactly are SketchUp developers dealing with? Dealing with. Sorry, my English is very bad, but this SketchUp 2019 future. Um, not sure exactly what they're dealing with. I also don't really talk to that developers that often. Um, no, Matt so. and I are pretty firmly rooted in the release. <laughs> right. And once the software comes out, it's a whole separate floor of the building. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, they're obviously they're uh, making it for different platforms, and we've got the uh, multiple different products. Like we got the viewer, you know, and the um, the online version and stuff like that. So. Yeah, there's a lot of, and we have the uh, HoloLens viewer and stuff, so they're dealing with that. I'm sure they're dealing with a lot of other stuff, too, but uh, probably in the code, you know, you got the, <laughs> got the code stuff going on there. That's, uh, that's stuff I don't that's uh, know really anything about. Uh, Python, I heard once. Um, what else you got over there? You got the uh, C++, of course. That is also a thing. Um, oh, yeah. Please model Hogwarts. Ooh, that'd be a cool castle. That it's would be pretty cool. I will edit list. Ooh, you made the list. <laughs> <laughs> a steam engine using MS Physics. That's that's some next level. You know, actually, that was something I, I started to try. I actually have a couple of steam engines I've made, um, which are really cool. They're, they're I think they're, I just think they're fun little fun models to make. They're miniature steam engines, just you know, they've got the one longer and the I don't remember the names of the other ones, but I found some <laughs> I found some plans for like miniature, machinable 
uh, steam engines. I thought that was so cool, so I downloaded them and started playing with them, but uh, I always thought it would be cool to go back and, and do MS Physics. I never actually went and did that though, so yeah, maybe. That's, that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. All right, so I'm gonna save. And uh, I'm getting to the point where I think, I gotta start thinking about how this happens. And throw some more blades in here, cross over down here, that's fine, I'll get that in there. And then I gotta start bringing stuff out so I got a spot to sit. It kinda looks like, if you look at this image, not only does it look terribly uncomfortable, but it does kinda look like uh, these swords kinda taper off and whatever is creating the seat actually comes from underneath. Got a little bit of a fold here where it comes up and then down, but it looks like a lot of these maybe come from underneath and then go down on there. So um, I'm gonna drop that vertically. So it looks like yeah. So maybe the seats. I'm just gonna draw a line for reference, so I can note this at a later point. That's about where the seats at. So I'm going to take some of these ones and push pull that past my seat line. That's an official term for uh, throne builders, in case you guys hadn't heard. Seat line. Okay. Obviously going to need to fill that out a little more. I'll take this guy right here. Slide him over someone like that. So what's the coolest model you built this week? I'm gonna throw that out to everybody. Hopefully you're modeling some, some cool stuff. What's the, what's the best thing you got to work on? Doesn't have to be work work. When I say work, I mean like spent time on in SketchUp is what I'm talking about for. So maybe I should say what's played with then. What have you been? Enjoyed yourself. What have you been modeling? What have you been making? Yeah. What do we, hopefully you got to spend some time in SketchUp this week. Always one of my goals is to try to spend some time modeling for fun. Even when I uh, did more of this for like, uh, you know, work, production type modeling, still try to spend some time modeling just for fun. So hopefully you guys are doing that too. It's a great way to uh, learn or, or keep on uh, learning is just go in and get after it, you know. Uh, so hopefully you guys are, are doing that. And if so, I'd love to hear what you're modeling for fun. New summer house log cabin. Nice. Ooh, cool, sounds like a fun um, getaway. Uh, Arnold's room from Hey Arnold. Ooh, cool. <laughs> I do remember that being a cool room. There's that one uh, couch that folds out of the wall. Very cool. Um, site plans and surgical center. Nice. All right. I have that that I sounds have like that probably sounds like work rather than <laughs> fun. <laughs> I, but I, hey, I don't want to judge. You're in a surgical center. Spend your weekend modeling that. That's cool. Awesome. And this dimension uh, character uses many modeling softwares, but SketchUp not change. Oh well. Thank you for saying so. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, warehouse is full of Max converted models, so we have less modelers than before. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I barely, if I, well, if I do use SketchUp, it's not really making stuff from scratch. It's kind of, you know, augmenting already made models or stuff like that. It's nice to have that as a resource that you can get those models down there for free to to add to your whatever you're doing. So I'm coming through here and just to get my web of intertwined uh, swords, um, 
basically chopping the tips off and creating a flat surface that I can push pull. And then as I do that, I can just kind of pull those through so that they overlap. And again, my goal is to get them down to fill in down to this seat. So any place I'm seeing a tip shine through like this, I can just come in and All right, I do have to admit, like I said, three mouse is absolutely not a necessity. There are sometimes like this where it's kind of nice to be able to weave through a model to see something that it's not easy to see initially. Through. Um, other stuff, what do we got? Uh, soccer stadium. Ooh. It's cool. Any, as, was that a specific soccer stadium or are you just, uh, just making something? Not a wrong answer to that. That's awesome regardless. Mm -hmm. But uh, just curious if there's a uh, specific soccer or... They said they just invented it. It's ah. an imaginary stadium. That's cool. I like that. That's... Or, sorry, not to be internationally insensitive, football stadium. Football? For, for those... Uh, not Americans out there. It does make me wonder, at what point in history was somebody like coming up with a new game, which is cool, and decided, I'm gonna call this football also. Cause I mean, it seems like they had to know that football was a thing somewhere, right? Yeah, for sure. So why they choose football again? Just a pompous American thing, or what? What's I don't know. I don't know what feels there. Yeah, that is weird. Well, I think because originally you couldn't throw it, right? Or it's like rugby, you couldn't throw it forward. Right, but did a, did somebody in America go? We need our own version of this game. Like we can't can't let the whole world enjoy this game. We got to have an American version. Like is that is that what happened there? Is I don't know. I just I wonder about that. Like well, they have the Australian rules football, right? That's a thing too. Yeah. And that's different than soccer is. But yeah, that's to true. just take the name outright, not like say... Right. I mean, that's why people call it American football. Obviously. Right. So people call it that now, but I, I just wonder about that. Like, why? And it's like, well... Why, why you did that? You don't want to think of a new name. <laughs> <laughs> we already made the game up. Why do you have to make a name Naming up? stuff is so hard. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Columns, beams, tapered roofs, mullions for a religious building. Ooh, like that's what you made? That's, that's what they're working on. That's what that is pretty cool. I think uh, like a lot of religious buildings, especially the older ones, uh, that can be some, some pretty fun modeling, especially if you can get that information or those, those details that make up the, you know, the cool looking stuff. The gargoyles. Oh, love, love me some me gargoyles. Well, Matt and I got to spend a little time in, uh, I can't tell you why, because you have to wait and see, but we had to spend a little time in Nashville. That's right, Nashville, Tennessee, Music City. That's right. They have a term down there that uh, not all of you may know, but just throw it out because we're all about education here on SketchUp Friday afternoons. Uh, it's pronounced y'all. It is a plural version of the term you, which can be plural already. So in case you hadn't heard that before, there you go. Little, little, uh, little smarts from it's a us. It's tidbit. Yeah. And it's, um, it's good to spread that knowledge around cultural awareness. That's right. Um, and it's a thing that not a lot of people know or have heard of, so it's definitely good to get the word out there, spread y'all, um, and like you said, pluralize the plural. I mean, it's right. already you already can be plural, so if you really need to take a plural, make it a double plural. plural. That's right. Make it pluraler. Pluraler. No, but that was it. Was nice. That was a uh, everybody we met was super super nice there, and we were able to experience the dining. The must-have 
dining experience when you go to Nashville apparently is something called hot chicken. Nashville hot chicken, that's right. So, in case you haven't heard of that before, it's a uh, fried chicken that is hot. It was spicy, spicy, spicy hot, not like yeah. most most like well, cold chicken is not bad. But uh, yeah, so if you ever get to Nashville, get you some hot chicken. It was it was good. It's yeah. good stuff. I was sweating quite a bit from my face <laughs> and my scalp. I feel like it was underneath, like dripping out of, from underneath my hair. Matt, like, oh my Matt baby, understand. I did give you a heads up too that I was going to. Understating that a little bit. That was <laughs> he. <laughs> there was some sweat happening. Yeah. Yes. Sweat happens, man. Sweat happens. All right, I'm gonna grab a blade right here, and uh, I'm gonna try do my best to rotate it back to flat. Let me go this way and snap onto. Come on, man. Go. And rotate it this way. Are you going to 3D print this when it's done? I don't think you were planning on doing that. No, I was. I mentioned this earlier. My intention is not to 3D print because I don't want to have to mess with making this thing a solid. It may be, that may be a, a down the stream thing. I just made a stream joke unintentionally and caught that I made that, so <laughs> anyhow. Um, downstream it may, may come back and make it a solid, but I really didn't want to have to, to worry about fusing all these pieces together. Um, my my real thing that I wanted to do is try to make something that looked like kind of, you know more of the Iron Throne look. Um, I didn't want to have to spend a bunch of time uh, worrying about how it was going to uh, be made into a solid, and that's it's a lot of work that I just didn't want to have to mess with right now. So so maybe sometime in the future. Cool. Um person uses SketchUp in their workflow designing custom homes. Although it is work, it's always fun work. So that's about all the modeling I do. Well, that's good to hear. That's awesome. You know, that's actually something we hear a lot and I really like that. I came from, I mean, I've only been at SketchUp for four years now, less than four years, four years in August. <laughs> um, and I used SketchUp personally and a little bit at work and I used a lot of 3D modeling. The company I worked at actually had its own 3D modeling tools, um, but we used a bunch of other ones, and SketchUp was always one of my favorite ones to, to get to have to use. So I respect that. Yes. Good job. Winter is coming. Not for a few good months yet. Ha ha ha. Well, it depends on where you are, certainly. Southern <laughs> Hemisphere, the winter could be approaching. Well, sort of. I guess it's... Autumn is approaching right now, and then winter, of course, after that, typically. Um, but that's a that's a, a line from Game of Thrones, right? Yes, Winter's winter coming. is coming. Winter's coming. Maybe. I've heard that a lot. Yeah, they were saying it, and then you see it on the memes online, of course. That Any of the memes with the Ned Stark and the sword there? What, you mean Widowmaker? <laughs> or <laughs> Ice? <laughs> Apparently, I don't know. Somebody did say that ice was the weapon with with which Ned was beheaded, or uh, was. It's not a spoiler, really. Was killed, His head chopped off. Well, Tom Tom already told us that everybody dies, so everybody I guess there are no spoilers. Shh. Shh. Andy is calling out that he's using SketchUp for camper van design, design the inside. Mm. That's cool. Sweet. Um, and Red C130 mentioned that uh, he managed to make a tree after our last stream. That's awesome. Did have a problem with the leaves. Leaves. Leaf? Leaf. Leaves. Leaf. Um, that's, that's, I mean, that's still awesome. That's really cool that you, you were able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the most successful models that I've seen as far as leaf design goes is probably just... Uh, 2D cutouts of PNGs and using those images instead of uh, going through and cutting. I mean, you can you can make a huge, very detailed model from a single leaf if you needed to. So the ones that I've seen that I like the best are the ones that have 
just square P and G's of a leaf that is clear on the outside or transparent on the outside. And then that's just sprayed or whatever connected all over. Those are the coolest. But no matter what you do, manually putting leaves on a tree is <laughs> it's something. It's really something. Yeah. All right, so we've got to one of the points that I have been looking forward to, and that is this right here, this, this mess, this, the seat. So I kind of mocked out where the, the seat's gonna go. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. So what happens here with the, the swords is they come up and they get bent over. Again, melted by the dragon breath, apparently. So what I'm going to do, I was saying that, I, I would say that because I did not know that. I just learned that today. Um, so what I'm gonna do is save, and I'm gonna try using Fredo Scale. So Fredo Scale has a bunch of tools that are awesome for deforming. Um, if you ever have to take a shape, and I'm guessing that's the way that bus we looked at in the beginning, remember the later dude's bus that was kind of arced up? I'm guessing that was created using Fredo Scale. But one of the things it has is this radial bending, which is really cool. So the way it works is I select geometry. Um, oops. There we go, select the geometry. Can you move it kind of towards the middle of the model? Oh yeah, those? sorry. Kind of like hiding that behind my head. Yeah. And what it's going to ask me to do now is select where I want to start bending, where I want to end bending. And the other thing I can do is I can actually choose the axes that I want to bend. So you notice that this, this uh, sword isn't straight in line with the axes. It's not on... Uh, whoa, I'm all, I'm all flipped all over. Um, it's, not on, it's not aligned with the seat. It's off the seat. That's cool. That's not a problem because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point like right here and extend it a little bit past that seat and then I'm going to grab it and bend it down. You can see what that does. So it bent it in not in line with the sword itself but against the geometry of this seat. So this is a super cool tool to go through and deform geometry. So if you have any kind of organic stuff you need to model, anything like that, you know, a fan of that, this is a super cool way to make those, those, those models. The issue, the thing you need to be conscious of, again, it's not a bad thing, it's just one of those things you have to keep in mind as you model, is model maintenance. If I come in here, and I'm gonna save. I'm getting better at that because of you guys. I've been, modeling things in 3D computers one way or another for over 20 years and I've always been bad at modeling and it's your gentle loving nagging through the comments that have really taught me to save often. So thank you. Back on track. So if we go to view and we look at our hidden geometry, this is what you need to be conscious of. So all these swords up here, I've tried to make super low polygon, as, as few pieces as possible, because I knew as we came in and started melting seat, or melting swords like this, we were gonna end up with a lot of geometry. So if I come into this, so if I look at one of these swords, let's look at the main sword right here, I'm gonna select everything, 104 entities. If I select this one blade, this doesn't have the, the hilt and the pommel and the handle on it, but this piece by itself is 260. So over twice as much geometry for that piece because of that bend. So again, like I said, not a bad thing, not a huge issue, but something to be conscious of uh, as you start doing that. Dragons don't care about file size. They don't. They They're melting stuff all over the place. They got polys going up through the roof. They These do guys it. guys just fly around and burn stuff. They do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. That's so dragonish. All right, I'm gonna grab a sword with a handle and without, and I'm going to, again, I'm gonna uh, get these back to straightish. Rotate it on three axes, snapping to red axes. 
and then I'll do the same thing with this sword. So anytime, remember, if you ever have anything that's off axes, there's only three rotations you should have to do. And I like doing using the move and the handles because it's simpler. I don't have to, oh, that was really easy. Um, you should only ever have to do three axes, one on, or rotates, one on each axis to get it back to straight. Something else, of course, I could have done, I didn't do, is if I had saved each of these uh, as a, or created them as a component, I could have actually gone over here into my component browser and just pulled it out. It would have automatically been on axes, but I didn't do that. That may go back to the question I had earlier. Why didn't you use components? Probably should have. So, okay, but now I have to. Look, I have these. How about that? Um, to be honest, one of the reasons I didn't use components to begin with is because components are initially inherently connected to each other. So it means as soon as you do any modification to any one of them, all the others are gonna change. And I had a little bit of a worry that I would forget I was using a component <laughs> and I would go in and modify it and then look back and ruin, ruin my throne. So didn't want to do that. All right, uh, it looks like right here in the middle there's one kind of an inverted sword. So I'm gonna take this one Face it upwards like this. Should probably figure out how far down the ground is on here. Let's say this. Let's say this tip right here is how far I'm gonna go. Whoops. I'm gonna go down. Take this guy right here, and I'm gonna grab him by that point and drop him right on the ground. And this person Just uses SketchUp for signage and wayfinding projects. Very cool. Nice. Um, what version is uh, are you working on? This is SketchUp Pro 2019. It is. Um, let's see. I've always been obsessed by SketchUp. Can you gift me a free version? Uh, well, you're in luck, my friend Nabil. We have a free trial, of course. And then we also have the online version app.sketchup.com completely free to use. Um, what would happen if you used Skimp on the bent one? And now Skimp is a new plugin. I haven't used it yet, but um, it is a very cool uh, tool that will let you import geometry. So Skimp would actually go through and reduce the polygons that are in there. So yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. That that is something that we could we could surely take a look at. Um, except that my Skimp. Uh, license has expired, so you'll have to try it and let me know. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go take this guy right here, I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna grab only the geometry, the blade, and do another quick radial bend. And go from here, and then what I'm looking for, see this, this, is the, this line represents my seat, so I'm starting my bend a little way below where the seat is and I'm extending the line up so that, that middle line, the middle of the bend, lines up with that seat. Then click there and then I can just grab it and bend it over to about 90 degrees. Again, I'm trying to uh, intentionally be a little sloppy, a little organic, a little messy. Um, but then when that, when that bends, now I can actually come in here and move it around and put it exactly where I want up against that seat there. Cool. All right, I'm gonna be a touch lazy and I'm gonna copy a couple of these. Actually, let's go, let's do this. Let's just flip along red like it's no big deal. Like I said, MBD. Isn't the bend wrong? Are you that did, that did not work right, did it? Well, you I, I have to, I just have to rotate, rotate it back. It, so. Get that the seat there. right. Awesome. So uh, let me ask you guys this. I'm not asking for what you think I should model next, but what are you guys thinking about modeling? What do you think would make a cool model and what's something you want to try? Um, Maybe it's something you haven't got to just because you haven't had time. Maybe it's something you're not sure how to start. But what's something that you want to model in SketchUp? I want, I want to hear some ideas that you guys have. I promise I'm not asking in a secret way so I can steal your ideas. Um, but I'm really curious. 
What are you? What have you thought about modeling, but haven't gotten to yet? I want to hear hear uh, what you got going on there. Uh, yes, and of course, people are talking about Make Twenty Seventeen, um, which is the last free desktop version of SketchUp, and you can use the extensions on there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is a thing. That's still out there. It's still still available as of now. No. Yeah. Hyrule Castle looks like uh, somebody. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. Yeah. Got anybody out there who has played? Uh, I know it's it's a little old now, but Breath of the Wild. You guys you guys got into that? That was that was a crazy video game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, because there are different iterations of Hyrule Castle, of course. It yeah. Depends on which one you want. It's like different different versions of Link and different versions of uh, the Master Sword. Tying it together. Sword, Thank you very much. Yes. But uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a cool one. That would be fun. Um, when is SketchUp going to port over to Linux? Well, well here's the thing. Yeah. We've done polls in the past. How many people will be willing to pay for a Linux version? And unfortunately, paying for. Uh, not, not a whole lot of you potential users on, on the Linux front. Um, doesn't mean it's impossible, doesn't mean it would never happen, but we'd have to see a big requirement for that because supporting multiple versions is, of course, work for us. So uh, if enough Linux users out there were to rise up together and tell us that they, that, that they want it, um, I don't know, I don't know what would happen. We'd have to see. Again, like I said before, Matt and I are uh, not in development, like okay. like at all. We're we're the last people you want to do that. So, uh, yeah, question would be if we could uh, make a good use case for that. Like, is there is there is there enough Linux users out there? Um, other things people are thinking about modeling: nine-story condo with BIM. All right. Cool. Uh, mechanical components, gears, levers, joints, etc. Cool. Uh, Notre Dame. Interesting and cool model. And uh, in the news as well, of course. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Yes, shame, true shame. It is. Um, lighting sconces in my design plans. Cool. Humanoid character model. Ooh, nice. Joe says he would certainly pay for the Linux version, but he thinks it's assumed there are not enough. Yeah. All right. Not enough, not enough voices that we've heard, I suppose, is what you're saying. That is right. And uh, Fredo scale just got crazy with me. Savings is especially important once you get into things like uh, extensions. Right, very true. Um, why not bend them from outside the group? It creates a group inside the group. It does, and that's what I've uh, I've had varied uh, success with bending at different spots. So I was trying outside. If I go to or inside the group, if I go to outside the group, let's see. If I bring this over like this, woo! Well, I got crazy with it. Down to just Something weird is going on with this sort. Well, and it just splattered again. Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, you think it's with that particular instance? <laughs> or? It doesn't like this, so I'm going to try. I'm going to go ahead and um, Shouldn't be a big difference between this and the last one. It's copied off the same geometry, so hmm. I'm going to explode. And just for fun, I'm going to head in here. I'm testing right now. Oh, there's a group inside the group. I wonder if that was why. That was weird. All right, I'm going to try just, 
just gonna give this a quick quick bend. That seemed to work okay. That was odd. Something about a nested group was uh, making Fredo scale less than excited about doing its thing. I don't know what that was, but uh, we're good now, I guess. Weird. All right, so I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna make copies. This is gonna be a bulk of the seat. Boulder retaining walls in terrain and landscape have always been a challenge for me in terms of time invested, model size, and getting them to look aesthetically pleasing. Um, True. Yes. So take a look at. Might have to. I might, might need assistance on this, but I think it's terrain eroder. Is that correct? From Enerot. Um, it is a cool. Very easy to use extension that will let you take rough shapes and make them into boulders or those sort of organic things. Um, yeah, it looks like it's called Enerot Fractal Terrain Eroder is the formal name. That is the one. I don't know if Enerot's on here tonight, but uh, yeah, she made a really cool extension just for people wanting to do exactly what you're talking about. And what you do is you just feed it some raw geometry and it goes through and it makes it look like organic rock kind of stuff. So cool. Um, I live in Arizona and am, uh, am in desperate need of quality plants native to the desert southwest. Hmm. I would recommend taking a look at Lauberg. We talked about that. Last week? Uh, week before? Yes. L A U B W E R K. Yeah. Uh, it is an extension for SketchUp that uh, lets you uh, create different types of plants. I don't know how it works regionally, if it breaks stuff down by, by region or, well, I mean, it's from Germany, so I don't know. Odds are probably against it having a Arizona button, but mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a pretty cool tool because it does make it. Uh, real easy to generate what is a geometry intense process. Right. So that would be something to check out. Sweet. Uh, my first time using SketchUp was in 2004. It offered me the ability to do projects most CAD design can. Uh, that's great to hear, Joe. Uh, I was a uh, builder doing accessibility projects, ramps, grab bars, Etc. and SketchUp was the only option. Love it, always have. Oh, wow, thanks, Joe. It's uh, great to hear that. That's awesome. Whoops. Got a little OG going on here. I overgrouped. Mm. It's, it's embarrassing to admit, but uh, yeah. Too much grouping. Not, not good. There we go. I'm out. I'm out of the group. All right, so my seat's coming together. My <laughs> floppy, floppy sword's on there. Um, let's straighten out some of this. Fortunately, nobody will actually be sitting on here, so I don't have to worry too much about any kind of real comfort. Mm -hmm. Eric the Blue uh, is going back a little bit, but says uh, that they're playing through Breath of, Breath of the Wild right now. It's a good one. It's, I mean, once you get into that, though, you're, you're that's that's what to win it. <laughs> that's what you're gonna do because yeah. it's just so uh, engrossing, and it's got some ridiculous video game moments where you're like, just wow, how big is that thing? How how awesome is that? And and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. So good, that's cool. I'm wait, waiting for another one. Waiting for more, more Link, more Zelda. Actually, I didn't really care for Zelda. She's always getting captured. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, in the in, in the game. Wild, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess. Or just in general. Okay. I'm okay with princesses getting in trouble. I mean, that's kind of the the, the basis of video games at this point, right? Mm -hmm. That's what. It's all Mario does. It's all you know. But uh, yeah, I didn't. Well, it seems like Zelda's 
more powerful than peaches or something or like daisy yeah she can she can throw it out if she has to yeah. definitely definitely saw a little bit of that in breath of the wild that's cool i really only know zelda from well i know it from a couple of games but uh, ocarina of time or ocarina of time depending on how mm-hmm. you it, but that was a good certainly one certainly has part of the triforce in that mm-hmm. uh, powers from that so she does her thing Ant three twitch looks good to me. You do great work. Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, I think it looks great as well. So you guys are you guys are too kind. Still don't know anything about this thing I'm making, but uh, I was I was expecting some more uh, some more trivia here, some more more inf- Game of Thrones info. Yeah, I, we've been a little light. Yeah, what do you guys think is going to happen on this season of the Game of Thrones HBO series? Good enough, Brooks. You got the ice, of course. You got the fire. You got the White Walkers. We've got the Jon Snows. All right, so the White Walkers became a thing, right? Because... I remember watching that first episode, and it's like mm-hmm. how it starts, isn't it? It's yeah, one of the very first scenes, them, yeah. and then nothing else happens for like... For like six seasons. Or like. <laughs> they like hit at him and like kind That's of show, suspense right there. Yeah. We'll be back to this. But now they show him In a few all years. the time. They got him up there, you know. All right. That's cool. You got the Night King there. You got the horn. It kind of looks like Darth Maul, but blue version. I have definitely picked that up with the the crown thing there. That's uh, mm. yeah. Oops. Uh, let's see how to best do this. All right, so I got a situation here. Learning opportunity has has presented itself. So. You can see this sort of, ooh, that's kind of cool looking. Well, actually, it kind of looks like a pineapple, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool pineapple. Yeah. Um, so this sword right here, I got this thing right here, um, stuck it there, tucked it under some, some blades. I want the same thing over, there's another one coming off over here. So what I wanted to do was just take it and flip it back this way. This is a group that is oriented to the geometry of the blade that's been twisted and moved around. So it means I can't just select it, right click, flip along, groups red. Likewise, it's not as simple as just flipping it over because I gotta flip it in multiple axes. If I hit scale right now, the scale box also aligns to the group geometry. So what I really wanna do is take this as it is, flip it along itself so it goes backwards. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a line. It really doesn't matter where that line goes. Grab those two together, right click and make it a group. Now that group is bigger and it's aligned to the world axes. Now I can say scale, flip to negative one or right click, flip along groups red. Flip it back like that, explode that, get rid of that extra geometry, and then slide that sword into the throne. So, in case you guys ever come up with something like that, um, all you have to do is make a temporary container that is aligned to those axes, makes it real quick to move that stuff around. So. Could you also change the components axes if you wanted to? Then you have to change them back, I guess. But. Yeah, you can, absolutely. So if I have off axes geometry like that, you can come in here and I can do something like click here and uh, reset the axes, which is going to put them back to the world axes. So I come out here and pick it. Oh, I'm gonna do it again. Reset. I'm missing a step here. Reset. I have to tell it to. There we go. 
And now, yeah, I could have done that also, but then which is want, fine. And then if you wanted to like make it longer or whatever after that, then it would kind of be annoying. Right. So yeah. So if I wanted to come in here and make it longer, shorter, I'd have to come in, I'd have to grab this and then do something like move it along. Yeah. See, there we got. Ooh. That's funky. Enjoying that more than I should. Right. Whereas if I keep it like this, then I can always use scale to come in and manipulate or change that and it stays on axis. So ideally, if I have a group or a container like that, I want to stay on axis with it, but it's your call. You can mm -hmm. you could you could change that if you wanted. The axes are not a permanent fixture to a group. Uh, you can always come in and make changes at some point later on. Alright, um this is looking good. It doesn't look like my seat's quite wide enough. I need to go a little bit wider. So I'm going to grab a couple pieces from this side, copy them over here, and then maybe grab these two, push them over here. I don't like that one. All right, that looks better. Now I gotta get a handle, I'm gonna save. All right, I gotta get a handle on what's going on here with these armrests. I don't quite understand. Fortunately, I got a picture of that. Move these. Uh, right here. Ooh, you can see that Ooh. sweep. Yeah. I don't think I, uh, a little okay. bit. Yeah. That's all right. That's the reclined version That's in the photo. <laughs> Windswept. Um, yeah, that's definitely a little more laid back than I was expecting. I, I remember I had that and I kind of brought him back up because I thought that was too much. I thought that was excessive. For the Iron Throne on Game of Thrones, I thought something was excessive. Um, so, this is what I'm after next. Um, similar to what I did for the seat, I think I'm just going to come in here and maybe give myself a rectangle. How high do I want to come? Like that high? A little higher. Oops, sorry. I'm, I'm running out of real estate on my screen here. Slide this a little smaller. Make this. How luckily it's a buyer's market. Bigger. For screen real estate, so. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> All right. So something like that, maybe. just to get the full effect. Let's, let's throw it on both sides. Now that's, this seat's, this seat's, this feels a little bit too big, so I'm gonna actually take a sword off of each end and bring it in, bring it in. Whoops. Uh, something like that, maybe? Ooh, yeah, I buy that. Definitely not deep enough though, huh? Man, or does that just stick out? I think I have an isometric view. Let's see. So it comes out a little bit, but this is definitely a, a deeper seat than what I have created. So we're gonna have to fix that. And I think I know what I'm gonna do. Whoops. Um, I'm gonna keep this well, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'll just grab all this and slide it out to begin with. Let me get, get, the, get the proportions right first. That looks better. Um, so that's what the armrests I want look like. All right. 
And now I'll just, like I did before, I'll just hop into these real quick, pull them through. Just push them through these swords, they stick out the back. Whoa, I just hit my head on the Iron Throne. Like playing hide and seek here. Ooh, I'm in the throne. All right. I could have probably exploded this out too, made it one mass of geometry. I could have grabbed a bunch of pieces and just used move to stretch it out, but. I'm not quite ready to give up on this geometry and let it uh, merge. I just have a feeling I got a little bit more sculpting to do, so there are ways out of what I just of what it, where I'm at. But uh, for this being just a few extra clicks to push pull some stuff, I uh, I feel okay about that. Like I'm spying on stuff, peeking between swords. It's a perfect spot where if I had known anything about Game of Thrones, I probably would have mentioned a sneaky character, a spy or something. I got that though. One more. Sneaky killer. I don't know. Isn't uh, there somebody's daughter or something, a younger girl character who ends up being like a spy assassin kind of? Any of you folks know who's a spy character in the Game of Thrones Averse? Could be um, somebody. I'm Could be many folks. A spy, <laughs> a sneaker, a spy, some sort of person. Um, Arya. Yeah, that sounds like it. Littlefinger is very sneaky as well. True. She have a sword called like ice pick or something like that. That's Needle. Like, that's Needle. That was it. Yeah, pokey. I remember seeing. Stick him with the pointy end, of course. Needle. That's the one. Yeah, we've gone well beyond my base knowledge for this <laughs> particular topic. All right. Um, Christopher asks, can't you just double click on one uh, once you've push pulled one? Um. When you're push pulling the sword ends through the back of the throne. I could have. Each one was three groups deep, so I had or two groups deep, so I had to go back to select, double click, double click. Um, but yeah, I should have been able to. Uh... Sure coulda. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. I don't know. I, I don't want to say. I, I got them. Good call. Nice call. Nice. All right. Um, I went through the process of aligning one of these swords back to the world axes, and then I used it in something rather than copying it like I should have. So. Um, go ahead and move this over here. Actually, I'm going to do this. There we go. That's still not quite right, is it? Something's not right. Grab that, and this geometry right here is temporary. I'm not going to be keeping this. Some still still out of plane, just slightly. 
bring that out to here, which isn't all bad, of course, because I do kind of want this to all not be straight. I want it to all not? That's not the probably the right way of saying that. All right, Let's pull this out again. I'm getting one on up here and let's see. This actually, we decided this does come out a little bit further, so move that down, something like that. This now, this this piece right here, I should make that a group, is gonna go away. I'm gonna fill this up with swords, so I don't have to have that. Um, make that a little longer. There we go. All right. I can take that and I'm just going to go use the tip to just option copy a couple of these. I'm doing the same thing I did before. I'm just going to throw a few of these in here. Again, the uh, I'll probably come back, change the pommel, hilt, handle, whatever, uh, once we get a little further in here. But right now I'm just getting a couple pieces to play with. One more. Oops. You know, one of the hardest things to do with a computer program is uh, simulate things like randomness. And somebody was asking about boulders earlier. It's just such a pain because there's no there's no logic or order or anything like that to it. So. A lot more work. S straightforward, clean cut stuff is so much easier than uh, trying to come up with organic messy shapes. That's why we should pick a sci-fi design next time. Nice clean lines and <laughs> some order. Definitely makes it, uh, it's, a, it's a simpler thing to work on. Awesome. All right. Speaking of messiness, same thing I did before. Use my move command to grab these rotating handles and rotate those in and out a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell what exactly is going on over here behind Matt's head. Oh, sorry. No, that's right. No, you don't have to move your oh, head. Yeah, Hold you, on. you can see. <laughs> I can see. Um, so we have some more swords here coming in this way, coming this way. It does actually look like there's something solid behind here, but uh, we'll do our best to fill it in without that. Whew. This is this is a lot of swords end up in here. Sorry, I'm obviously thinking and thus the top the topping. Whew. Talking <laughs> is winding down. <laughs> oh, all right. Boy. I'll try to talk here. Oh, well, so we need another question. We need to talk about something. Well, of course, we got the Game of Thrones. We got the when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. Whew. All right. I like, that. I like that change up right there. That was. Yeah, no, they, uh... Those looters knew what they were doing. And then, of course, uh, we can talk about the description that I copied from Wikipedia. The Iron Throne is a metonym. 
for the fictional monarchy of Westeros, as well as the physical throne of its monarch. How do you how do you feel about that? Yeah, metonym. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen that word. I've never heard that word before. Yeah. All right, without looking, does anybody know what metonym is? Or know if you're lying, because if it takes longer than five, six, seven seconds, we know you're Googling. Metonym, metonym, Anybody? metonym. Anybody? Metonym, metonym. I don't see any comments about it. I would say I'm disappointed, but I don't know what it means either. <laughs> Well, so there's that, of course. All right, so yeah. Duh, metonym. <laughs> YouTube can't even spell metonym. It's spelled with an M, of course. I don't know what it is at all, in the slightest. No clue. Um, it sounds like... A metronome, a metronym. <laughs> it sounds like a word that means a word that represents something. But isn't that just a word? <laughs> That's what words are. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I kind of failed on that one. <laughs> it's a series of sounds that <laughs> mean a or thing. Or letters that uh, refer to a... A something. <laughs> yeah, that is a word. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, dude. A metonym. That's it, more or less. Name. See, Christopher Ryan says, I'm on, I'm on track. Yeah. It's a word that means a thing. <laughs> All right, so... We're getting along here. I'm going to take out the block just to see. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as solid as what we got over here. I need to do some more weaving, though. I got to bring some of these pieces out further so I got room to stick something behind them. Which is really, it's that's sword weaving 101, really. If you, I mean, if you even care, whatever. Needle point, if you're Aria. All right. Boom. <laughs> nice. All right, get this guy turned up on in. Ah, uh, yes, the word Vivian Innovations was metonym. From the Wikipedia article on Iron Throne, metonym. Because the Iron Throne is itself a metonym. Of course. Of course. I mean, self-evident. Obviously. Like, what else is it going to be? It's not a palindrome or something. Nope. It's another word-related word I know. It's not a homonym. It's not a homophone. It, of course, is a metonym. It's not a vehicle. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Um, it's a vehicle to the top, to the monarchy of Westeros. It's, uh, is, uh, is there an Easteros? Is that what you're going to ask? Yeah, that sounds way better than the question I was about to ask. <laughs> no, I was going to say, is Westeros, like, is that a country? Because uh, uh, the whole idea of Game of Thrones, right, is... You win or you die. There's a, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they got that, the seven kingdoms, of course. That that is the of course I did not know. So, Westeros is like the big place, and then the seven kingdoms are in there. Or is Westeros one of the seven kingdoms? Or what's what's the deal there? What's the uh, what's the thing? What's happening? Yeah, because of course the we've got Dorne. Ah, uh, yes, you're a Dorn. Dorne. Acronym, synonym, metonym, good, like it. Those are more words about words. For example, Washington is uh, Washington is a metonym for the federal gov federal government. I cannot speak. Oh, that makes sense. Westeros is one of the seven. 
that makes sense of something. Cool, I buy that. I'm good with it. And I'm gonna throw this guy back here. All right, just coming along. This uh, this thing. So it, it is a uh, <laughs> well, as King's Landing might be a metonym for the monarchy of Westeros. So there's that. I thought I thought this was a metonym for the monarchy, or is this a oh. metonym for the game itself? Oh, uh, maybe it's the game itself. Uh, sorry, I sound like I let a lot of <laughs> a lot of air out of your. Uh, Blue there. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I thought I was on on track with the... Uh... Well, we worked out what a metonym was, so I'm still seeing this thing as a pretty solid victory right now. We, yeah. We all know what a metonym is, more or less. Kind of. Hello, Go Jamie. Uh, was wondering if you ever look at viewers' projects. We talked about that, maybe having people submit their uh, models and then kind of taking a look at them and critiquing them, talking about the good and the bad, certainly. Um, so is that something you guys would like to see? Would you like to um, perhaps submit your own models and see like a kind of a live model critique type uh, live stream? Is that something you guys would be interested in? Yeah, let us know, because that is, it is literally an idea we were kicking around yesterday. Um, is having people send their send us links to their uh, 3D warehouse models and asking for honest opinions of what we think of their work. Uh, if that sounds like something you guys would be interested in, we can uh, maybe try to put something together for that around that. Ornaments, yes, I put ornaments on the list as well. Like Christmas ornaments, we're we talking, or yeah, uh, I didn't exactly know, but I just wrote down ornaments. Hey, um, that's could be Christmas, could be um, ornamental. Um, that's a word for like. Uh, well, Matt, it's a metonym <laughs> for a metonym for a bunch of stuff. <laughs> for things that are pretty and shiny, I'm pretty sure. Or mm -hmm. ornaments mean shiny. Something like that. Yeah. Decoration, I guess. That's what I was thinking of. Decor. Right? Ornaments would be... Well, I was just wondering, are we, are we talking like... Uh, yeah, are we talking like... Just specific a to a... Specific to a... Yeah. How does one submit models for consideration to display at 3D Basecamp 2020? That is a thing that will happen when we're closer to 2020. Um, if you guys don't follow us already, which I assume you do since you found us here, um, you should check us out on your favorite social media channel and uh, possibly even go to our website and there's a real easy way to get signed up for our newsletter because we will be calling for that at some point. Um, for those of you who don't know, in the past we've always had a gallery, which is uh, user created work and it's anybody can submit you don't have to be going to base camp even to get it in there but it's uh, it's the best and uh, most impressive models we've seen and it's not just models it's I mean it's output if you do real nice uh, uh, drawings for you know houses or anything construction drawings anything that you make in SketchUp and you have a good presentation of it we'll take it and then consider it for actually putting into our uh, our gallery, which is something people can walk through and actually see the models or see the pictures throughout Basecamp. So we will be, we haven't actually, we're still in the process of planning to plan for Basecamp 2020. We know a lot about it, but we haven't put together like uh, content or anything like that. 
but we will be talking about it very soon. So if you're not following us on social channels, start following, go to our website, get in our newsletter, go to the forum and sign up because all those places will be notifications will be put up uh, asking for submittals for presentations, for like you're saying, the gallery, uh, anything that we need that we, to pull in from you guys for Basecamp, we'll be pulling for through those channels. So I definitely, definitely uh, find out where to get information from us and then, then we can fill you in. Um, you know when it is and where it's going to be, but that's all. Yes, we haven't uh, really started too much of the content planning or um, yeah, other stuff planning for it. So that's pretty much it <laughs> we know right now. There are some things we know that we don't share at this point. There are known knowns. Yeah, of course. There's some we stuff we uh, we we dole stuff out some of our knowledge, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of things we don't have a content program yet at this point, which will start about a year out. So that's still a couple months away. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be cool though. It's gonna be a, a good one. And I've never been to Vancouver, which is where it is. I've never actually been up there, so. I'm interested in seeing that. Yeah, seems like a cool town from what I've heard. Spoilers, yeah, that would be spoilers, and we don't want to spoil anything for you guys. That's right. Uh, base camp, we want to keep it to surprise you on its own terms. That's right. Um, this uh, commenter says they're using the SketchUp Pirate very hard to make money in the country where I live. That would be against our uh, user agreement in terms of service. Technically be against the law. So uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't Please don't do that. Uh, and certainly don't uh, talk about it either. <laughs> this would be the wrong place to talk about that. Yeah, not here. We are, for those who have not caught this, official SketchUp employees. We are Trimble employees, Matt and I both. And uh, yeah, we do represent Trimble, the company that makes SketchUp. So, uh, and we also represent law-abiding citizens. Well, we also like things like we, we do work to uh, bring stuff to you guys, but we like getting Buying paid food. and yeah, eating. <laughs> I have a family Living I provide for. Yeah. And uh, we do that by selling the software. So... Um, I understand it's tempting. It's all. It's I get it. It's tempting to go out and there's something about software that people get confused about. Like, oh, it's just software. It's just. It's just. But there are literally thousands, if not millions, of hours of people's time and energy that go into every aspect of creating software, writing the code, um, help documentation, testing, the, the how it's presented, marketing. All of that is done by people. And unfortunately, when you steal software you end up stealing from those people. So um, I know people look at software as being like this big faceless conglomerate of stuff, but these faces right here are the faces that you help feed when you actually pay for your software. So we do appreciate very much that people do that. Yes, thank you to the paying folks. And yeah, we do have a free version of the software as well, so I can't. Uh... Use that. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, have you designed the stick of knowledge yet? Have not, but we uh, didn't know if we were gonna do a stick of knowledge. That's a little peek behind as yeah. well. Spoiler alert. We're not not a hundred percent sure on that one. We've had uh, sometimes easy to spread the viruses or viri yeah. uh, through There's the use of USB sticks. Definitely some potential issues with security uh, when it comes to that specifically so yeah I don't, I don't know that may be that uh stick of knowledge may be a thing of the past we'll see the download of knowledge that's right we can give you a we'll give you a, we a website of knowledge or a <laughs> <laughs> the google drive of knowledge um but we could still do like usb thumb drives with sketchup cool design on yeah it doesn't mean that that uh those won't ex well let us know you, how about blank. this you guys tell us what what do you think would be uh, not to get too off topic here, but we're just we're hanging out. You know, it's 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 Friday afternoon and we're hanging out, having fun. 
what would be a cool thing that you could get at 3D Base Camp this year? What would be something that would be like you'd carry with you always? Much like some character from Game of Thrones carries something. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that happens. Somebody somewhere does, does that, right? A character has a thing that they Ned carry. Ned always carries his head around. I heard that doesn't happen so much. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll think of another one. Yeah. Uh, Go Jamie over on Twitch asked, are you going to 3D print this model? We don't believe we're going to 3D print this one. It's just kind of uh, to see if we could do it and kind of thought it would be a cool model to do. Um, but, yeah, we could. Uh, but I think for this actual, how Aaron's modeling it right now, uh, is not really made for 3D printing because it's all kind of grouped and overlapping and stuff. So I'm, I'm making a mess model. is what, <laughs> what Matt's saying in very nice, nice way. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, mess. Yeah, <laughs> it's messy. <laughs> uh, it is coming. It's, it's starting to come together, though. You, so YouTube says, don't loan your stick of knowledge to anybody. Don't use anyone else's stick of knowledge. A USB stick of knowledge is no more dangerous than a SketchUp water bottle. Uh, <laughs> it does depend depend on where you stick your stick of knowledge. That is that is true. Mm -hmm. A SketchUp water bottle could be more dangerous. It's larger. That's true. It's Fill got it some with heft. a liquid to be heavy. It could do some long term damage with that. You thing. could really ruin someone's day with, with a, a properly uh, aimed SketchUp water bottle. Mm -hmm. Now you can pour water on that. People don't like to get soaking wet in their clothing. Well, that could, that could really ruin a file too if you water. It's practically worse than a virus for a computer if you pour water good. all over it. Yeah, that's not good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it'd be a great idea if you guys bring some interesting models and then tackle what you think is the most difficult slash clever part in those models, it is going to be uh, richer in ideas. Yeah, no, I definitely like the idea of people submitting models that we go through and critique or say what we like about them, what's cool, about what seems like it was hard or how we guess it was done. Or yeah. Maybe if, some, if the person's even on the stream, they could walk us through how they, what they did to create the different things. Um, I believe this is in response to what they'd like to see uh, at 3D Base Camp, a sword with nice ornaments and carvings on it. That uh, also seems like it would be dangerous, along with the water bottle. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's water bottle level danger right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to, again, in my quest for avoiding perfect symmetry, I'm going to grab what I've created so far on this half, and I'm going to copy it over here, knowing that there is still more to add. Um, uh, so that when I start putting more details on, they won't be the same on both sides. But I don't want to start from scratch doing all that I just modeled again. So I'm going to option copy that over to the side. Oh, look at that mess. That's so cool. And I'll just use scale. And slide around over. That's about right. Ooh. 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 Looking pretty good. Look at that. Woo. What time is it? Yep, yeah, it feels like it's a little after two. I'm gonna save. It's mad. That's what I do. That's that's just my thing. That's my thing now. I save. Um and we're gonna take a break. Um we're gonna take a break for about ten minutes or so, and we're gonna come back at it and we're gonna keep uh, iron Throning, 
uh, like they do in Western, because uh, I don't remember <laughs> where we're, <laughs> like they do in, in the place where we're doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, space. we're going to get back at it. So um, I, we will, I will throw this model up. It may take me a couple days like I did last time. Um, I did get all, I should tell you that, I got all the models from last time up. I, every one, I, everything I saved, so that's the rocket we did at the beginning, the Mobius strip, the Mobius strip with depth to it, um, and everything that led up to our final beach with the, the face winged bug, <laughs> the, tree, the tree with the face hanging on it, oh. Um, yeah, it's all up there. It's all in Warehouse. If you go to 3D Warehouse, it's, uh, you can search for ATM, AMTMA, which I tagged all of, all the models with AMTMA, or look for my, uh, login. My login is the only Aaron, so if you look for that account, they're all in there. Um, but yeah, they're all up there, and once we get this Iron Throne to the point we get it to, which I don't know where it's gonna be, we got a little, we got some more time to model still after this break, we'll, uh, we'll get it upload it as well so it'll be up there and maybe you guys can take it and you know polish it up for me yeah we'll see. yeah during the break i'll uh try to look for the link to that and uh, put it in the comments so you can just click on cool. over to the 3d warehouse all right so all right. be right back we'll be back in a back few in
All right. Do you guys like that hold music? No, uh, the <laughs> not hold music. Um, it's like building up uh, intro music, intro or something like that. Yeah, I like that. I think that's fun. That's let's good. make it our every every stream. We'll use that music. That'll be our theme song. I think Matt should have to find new music every stream. No. <laughs> No, Matt does probably more than he should have to already, so I, I will put that on you. No, music is fun, though. Streams are fun. I like to do this kind of stuff this is versus time. regular work. Of course, this is regular work. Just joking. This is work. It's, it's still work. All right. What are you going to do for the um, textures on these swords? See, you know, there's a spot that probably uh, should have thought about, <laughs> <laughs> say, maybe a couple few minutes ago. Well, really, it's just one metal texture, right? If you just group the whole thing and That's true. splash a yeah, just, metal on the outside. I'll break the rules about uh, how you shouldn't texture entire groups. You should texture faces, which is kind of one of the things we say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a reason for breaking the rule in this instance. That's mm -hmm. a learning experience. That's right. That's a That's how we use the paint bucket tool in Westeros. That's right. Westeros. Dang Wester, it. No, I think it's Westeros. Os, os, who's got it? O H S, os, or is it os? O S S. There is a plug in for that. That is true. What is regular work? Well, I do video production stuff, so I make the some of the videos that go out on our YouTube channel, and then um, I do videos for Trimble, too. Uh, of course, Trimble owns SketchUp, uh, but they also do other stuff, not just the SketchUp, so I help out with that stuff. Hey, Charles, thanks. And welcome back to you as well. Thanks for watching, of course, and thanks to everyone for tuning in and sticking with us and watching Aaron, model the Throne of Swords. I was I originally made a promo thing that said <laughs> <laughs> modeling the chair thing or something like that. Live modeling chair thing, and then we thought that folks might get too mad because they're like, that's my iron throne. Don't be calling it a chair. Oh, thanks, Charles. Glad you've been enjoying the stream. I should say, Matt is underselling himself, of course. If you have spent any time on our YouTube channel and seen any of the produced videos, that is most likely Matt's work. So he does an amazing job of... <laughs> what are the tiles? What are the tiles just fell off the wall? <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys, <laughs> you see these things, right? So we're actually in what was an abandoned conference room. And we had to build a spot that we could do some filming. And actually, it was podcast when we started podcasting. We need a room to do yeah. podcasts in. So this was an echo chamber. It does have the, you know, drop ceiling. But the floor is concrete. The walls were this beautiful minty sea foam color. <laughs> but it was like an echo chamber when we walked in here. So we got these red and black panels and put them up. And apparently, we used command strips on the back. And apparently, command strips are good for a little over a year because they're all starting to fall off now. Yeah, it was definitely a temporary solution we thought would be in here temporarily. And um, uh, it shows. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to not seeing those <laughs> ones that have fallen off the wall. That was, that, was, that was entertaining. That was fun. Sorry you guys couldn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> we both looked to the side and it's... Awesome. Feels like I feel like I'm missing a sword here. I feel like something there should be another one right here. I'm not sure what exactly happened. I could have grabbed it to copy down you somewhere else and forgot to push the copy oh. modifier, so could leave it out. It's like a make make that one gold, like a gold tooth. <laughs> you know? I guess now they just have teeth that looks like regular teeth. You don't need a gold tooth, so. That's true. The iron tooth would blend in. All right.
right. Literally, so I'm, I, man, I, I hope this is, is still fun for you guys because I feel like at this point I'm just <laughs> grabbing stuff, copying it, move it somewhere else. I'm really kind of just pillaging. I'm grabbing chunks of swords and just now I'm just throwing them all over the place because I'm trying to fill it in a little bit more. Pillaging seems like it's in the Westerosi spirit. Yeah, that, so. that felt like it was on like on color for what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get this back here so you don't cut your leg when you sit down. I guess the dragon's breath probably uh, took the edge off of most of these swords, but still mm -hmm. doesn't really seem like a very practical seat. Maybe that's the point. It's, it's, it's scary. It's, ooh, look at that chair. Mm -hmm. The impracticality is part of its allure. That's right, yeah. For monarchs. Ooh, yeah, yeah, this is, that's a, that's one iron throne right there. It passes an iron throne. You didn't know no better. Uh, I'm trying, what do we, what do I do here? How do I fill this in? Looks like, it's like a poorly made lawn chair. I'll just take one of these guys and bring them over and. I hate those kind of lawn chairs. I feel like. I know. You like try to put your arm down to like. Get into it because there's no good way really to like get down into a like a lounger chair, you know. No. And then you, I always feel like I'm gonna fall through it at some. Like I'm gonna stick my hand through it or something's going through it, you know. Yeah. It's just, uh, and then sometimes they like bend back too far, or, like that doesn't latch right, and you fall. This is summertime time. I mean, we're getting into the spring summer outdoor time. That's right. I feel I feel more ready for it now than I was before the stream. Like I've been prepped for the disappointment that my first lawn chair experience will be. <laughs> we went to we got we actually got a a, a hammock in our backyard instead of Ooh. yeah so that'll be that'll be something that's that's nice. Model a hammock. That's that's a quick uh, soap, soap bubble. bubble. Yep. Yeah. Where did that shirt guy come from? Where did I get that from? Oh, maybe it's not. No, it does have an end. Okay. Um, so did you guys, everybody check out uh, our most recent podcast? Yeah, people have been talking about it in the comments a well, lot, especially oh, nice. because Tom Tom has been commenting on it. Yeah, he was a uh, basically sketch up celebrity right there. Yep. The Tom Town. Tom, Thomas, Thomason, the Tom Town. Some of the coolest extensions on the warehouse. Or in the world, for that matter. Whoa. Seriously. I'm going to say it. It's a pokey back there. I probably should have been a little more conscious of that, because that's going to be an issue. This may be a front model. This may be, <laughs> maybe what we shoot for today is a sweet looking model from the front. Because um, I could come in here and start doing layers back here too, which I, I really want to do. But I'm kind of thinking maybe we're better off doing, spend a little time uh, making, modifying these hilts and handles and making them look a little different. Uh, I think that's that's what I'd rather do, so. I'm gonna. Right. Have you thought of making this throne into an office chair with wheels? I think that would be cool. I think I totally think you should do that. <laughs> yeah. See how I did that? Best, best <laughs> chair thing ever. Best throne ever. Thanks, you guys. 
but I mean that could also be our next. Uh, oh, best chair challenge. We I like that. Uh, or you could just do it for the best bus ever challenge. You'd put your Iron Throne in there with the wheels on. <laughs> I may be cutting a little, couple couple few corners here, but. Uh, Stick with the low poly thingy. Let's do this. Yes, this would definitely make a good driver's seat. I need a, a iron seat belt. <laughs> kind of takes away the uh, the punch of it a little bit, you know, the kind of. Yeah, safety ruins everything. Yeah. Some of these just look like they're just smaller circles. Use the cutting corners plugin. Is that a real plug? Can't tell if that's a joke or not. Is that a real plugin of your that? You making fun of me? <laughs> well, you said you were uh... <laughs> cutting corners. Yeah, I did. That could be. That sounds like a real thing. I don't know. Yeah. Is that a real thing? Well, that's what makes it such a good comment. Thank you, YouTube, for your great comment. Uh huh. Uh huh. Just drawn and deforming. Do something like whoa. Click got got a little click crazy there. Oh boy, it's all fell apart. <laughs> Hey, since we're talking about podcasts, uh, anybody got some good ideas out there? But what would make a cool podcast? What, what, what's an industry you would like to hear about, or a potential professional you'd like to hear from? I like your guys' input on this kind of stuff. Yeah, whose voice? Would you like to hear on the podcast? Whose work would you like to hear explained in the words of the creator themselves? TomTom Tom Selection plugin has an option to convert all the same groups into components. That is true. Cool. Enerot, Christina Enerot. Christina would be awesome. Yeah. Pray if we take bring her on, she's gonna ridicule me for all the times I've said her name incorrectly, but I can handle that. Nope, that's not gonna work. I was trying to go for something cool there, but uh, it doesn't want to let me do something cool. So, oh, man. fine. Party pooper. Yep. No cool for you. Everybody's doing it. All the cool kids. Cool stuff. Oops. I broke it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm totally just making up stuff here, guys. So, oops. Just trying to make these all look a little different. There are so many different artists at 3D Base Camp. Parade float designer, furniture designer, movie set designer, movie lot designer. That would be supporting the set. Uh, small garden designer. Yeah, it'd be cool to hear from like a kind of niche construction workflow designer. Mm -hmm. Some kind of workflow that you don't normally hear about. Or yeah, for sure. That'd be, that'd be very cool. Bonnie, Bonnie Roskis. Yeah. Good um, ideas, good ideas. Fredo. Fredo would be uh, if you guys could find him, send him over. Yeah. He's he's too secretive. We can't uh, can't track him down. I've heard he was at the uh, last dev camp, but uh, that may or may not be true. He's a man of mystery. Charles says, thanks, uh, guys, for a great afternoon. He's got to cut out. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. Yes, Charles, thanks for sticking around and watching. And uh, absolutely, we're happy to um, hang around and model with you guys on Friday. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Yeah, for sure. Come back next week and uh, check out the recording. will be on YouTube and Twitch for a little bit as well. So uh, if you want to watch the end, it'll be on there to keep them coming. He says, we will. Cool, yeah, thanks again, sir. Uh, Matt Donnelly, also another person. Yeah. Question? And that would be a, from Master SketchUp, be a great guy to talk to. Wait, do we talk to Matt already, though? Um, Talked to him last season? I think we did. Yeah. Done. Got it. Knocked it off the list. <laughs> um, yeah, so we did talk to Matt Donnelly. It's not on YouTube because that was before we did the video version. Um, but if That's you go right. to, it's on our blog and then also on whatever podcast app you use, uh, it'll be season really one up there on the season one of the SketchUp Talk. So check it out on there. All right, so now is when that, uh, I'm not going to say it's biting me, but it's coming back to uh, to me that I created these one-sided. Not a big deal because what I can do is just go from the middle here, option, copy it around, 180 degrees, and uh, I got that uh, for that particular one that sticks out like that. I do something about this too. Nice. If I do say so myself. Ooh, I like the look of that. That's not actually in the drawing, but mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I think it's, if you're a king, you got to hang your keys somewhere or something, right? So yeah, that'd be nice. Turn that handle a little bit too. Or it seems like all if you're sitting in the throne all day, it'd be kind of boring. It'd be nice, to, it's fun to play with a little. Yeah, yeah like a fidget spinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a king, a royal fidget spinner. <laughs> Um, is it too late to model an Easter basket? Um, I suppose not. It would be a low uh, level of detail basket if we did get around to it because we're still finishing off of this. Yeah, let me throw a couple more details on here and uh, we'll, we'll, we can put something together real quick. Yeah. Um, 
number one drive for us would be sm smooth organic modeling. Number one ask that somebody would want here. Um, they're using SketchUp 100% for commercial interiors, mill work, shop drawings, but smooth organic modeling for STL would be our number one need. So there's definitely organic modeling plugins like uh, Artisan um, and of course um, Sub D quad face tools and uh, vertex tools from time to time that would be uh, that we've used on this um, stream before. Which um, that stream's still live, right? So people, well, on YouTube, people could go back and watch. Yeah, you can check that out on YouTube that if you have interest. Um, looking to see Aaron do some organic modeling live. Um, Ooh, that's cool. Oh. Wrench ball. Just keep making things up. Uh, he says Mark was the gentleman who was talking about the organic stuff and says he they use Artisan and they're working on sub D and vertex tools. Mm learning that how to use them so yeah check out that uh, stream because in the last stream you used a little bit too yeah i uh, tend to uh model. every once in a while just i just can't help myself i'll uh we'll, we'll dip our toes in the sub subdivision water mm -hmm. um but i don't want this to be exclusively organic modeling so we do we do want to try to keep uh mixing it up as well yeah but yeah, that does mean that does not mean no. It was not a no. But yeah, there's also other videos that are on our channel from Basecamp or other um, examples of organic modeling stuff. So yeah, just search in the old channel there and, and check out some of the other videos we have. Um, it may be cool to hear from some of the top posters in the forum. Tips and tricks, perhaps. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, it would be cool to get some sages um, uh, either on the podcast or involved in some way. Agreed. We will put it on the list of suggestions. Well, oh, I forgot to have a second side. All right, let's really go through fast now. Just when I thought I was out. Well, here's a question. Is anybody on the stream from Syracuse? Syracuse, New York, anybody? Oh, he says he wasn't serious about the Easter basket. Okay, well, we can certainly not do that. Fine, I won't. <laughs> Is it safe to leave Aaron alone? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, uh, I like to keep him company in here. I don't know what would happen if uh, it was just him. We have, uh, at some point in the not too distant future, I've heard a rumor that Matt 
will be gone during a Friday. So... What will we do? I'll we'll have to get somebody to... Nobody could take my place, but we'll have to... Obviously. So if somebody wants to come in and uh, fill in for match, just let me know. <laughs> An open, open invite to anybody. That's right. Swing on by. Ah, that's a weird looking thing, but From Peru, hello from Peru. Oops. Thanks for watching. All right, these two are, oh man. All right. Watching from Ukraine, hello. Ooh, that's awesome. You're from all over, it's awesome to hear where you guys are from. We're always from Boulder, so it's fun to see uh, where other people get to be from. Yeah. All right. I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Looks good. I'm tired. Like That's pretty cool. That is a. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Believable. Bulgaria. Oh, nice. Um, so, I'm wondering. So, like I said, I'm still I'm fighting the urge right now to to do some cleanup. I would it would really be cool to make this 3D printable, but I'm not feeling that right this second. Um, I do have the urge to go in and do things like chop off all these pieces of the bottom. Put a cutting plane right here and clean that up, but uh, I'm letting it go right now. Um, I am kind of wondering, might have to uh, take this. Uh, let's see, let's see how big this is right this second. If I go to my statistics, ah, look at that word. It's a baby model right here. Nothing. Three thousand faces, whatever. Okay, so the reason I ask, <laughs> I want to make this a group. I'm gonna copy said group. And I'm thinking about this. My uh, thingy. Mm -hmm. the, swoop. Um, the swoop, yeah. The iron the iron swoop as they call it in <laughs> in Westeros. I never did I ever get an answer on that? O H S O S S Os Os Westeros. Is it Westeros or is it Westeros? Westeros? Or does it depend on your accent? Os like gross or os like Haas. Ooh, check it out. Me sitting in the throne. <laughs> you crowned yourself. That's right. I win! <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Will from Melbourne. Hello. Yes, Flowify is awesome, but the issue with... Uh, well, I don't have a problem. I don't have an issue with with this. Um, I'm not really looking to take this and put it onto another, project onto another shape. What I really want to do is take what's already here and just curve that back. I did just have issues though. The reason I'm I'm thinking right now out loud is I just had so many issues with using. Uh, Fredo scale to bend something. That's what I was, that's my thought. When I look at something like this, I'm like, oh, that is totally Fredo scale. Just bend it back. Issue, like I said, we have with with the ones we just worked on, whereas group inside a group, it caused some weird geometry. So what I'm thinking is I got a copy of my group, so I'm gonna go into it and explode everything. And I'm gonna explode everything again because I know I have some nested instances there. All right, so there we go. Now I got just a bunch of overlapping raw geometry in here. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna select this. Be right, oh, right in the throat! <laughs> Can't talk! 
So you guys, you guys got to meet some of our coworkers just then. Uh, we were just pelted relentlessly with, with Nerf darts. Totally unable to defend ourselves. I man up with a welt here. So next Friday I can't talk. We know why. <laughs> so that was cool. That was that was a thing that just happened. <laughs> And they made it Game of Thrones theme too. They said the yeah. North remembers. I don't know if that picked up on, on Mike, but the North remembers. And then I got shot in the throat, <laughs> just like on Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, it, that's what happens when you sit on the throne. You become a target. So <laughs> I brought that upon myself. I, I thank my coworkers for keeping me humble. Wow, that got that got rough. It was like the Red Wedding. Whew. Invite us into their recording studio. That was, that was crazy. Um, yeah, so I don't remember what I was doing. I have amnesia. I have PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Does that exist in Westeros? Awesome. All right, so I'm going to try. <gasps> <laughs> Fredo. Oh. <laughs> you didn't happen to save in that. Uh, I did here. not. So close. I got greedy. I tried to. I tried to bend twice, and uh, stuff fell apart. Flew too close to the. I flew too close to the sun. Yeah. Fortunately, I saved just before, so I can come in here and uh, try this again. All right, so I'm gonna come in. I just want to bend it down a little lower, I think. Might look, yeah, it should be. So I'll go from here all the way up to the tip. Everybody, just be cool. All right, shh, shh. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna crack this. Yeah, I caught that. Thanks. All right. All right, one more thing I'm going to try. I'm going to go into the group, select everything. Hmm, it's not bending anything. No bending. Hmm. hmm. Maybe you'll forget that it had a problem. It'll just be good now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you don't sound like you believe that as a possibility. <laughs> right. Shh. It'll do it. It'll transform it, and then as soon as it's Shh. done. Okay. 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 Right now, don't. All right, <laughs> I got to save before it blew up that time. You did? Yeah. It snuck in. It saved. saved. It saved. Just as soon as you open it, it'll. <laughs> all right, we'll fix it. All right, so I had some. But let's see. Yay! <laughs> all right. You're modeling on egg eggshells for a second. That was that was crazy. Whew. That was some that was some stuff that got real. <laughs> All right, so so I want to try. So that was cool, but I'm gonna take. All right, this. Here here's the other thing I want to try. We talked about. I'm gonna have. I'm just gonna have some some. Somebody somewhere probably said there's only one Iron Throne, but I would apparently disagree. All right, so I'm going to do something like this. 
do a quick offset. <laughs> oh, nice. I you know where you're going. All right. All right. Do something like this. Probably like this. Oops. No idea if this is going to work. But that's never stopped me from trying things in the past. It's either a lesson in trying or stupidity. Hmm. All right, so we have an Iron Throny. I personally like that one profile. Better. See, this is total sci-fi. This is like this is carved out of like concrete or steel or something. Put a couple of lights in there. Mm -hmm. Done. Got like Klingon warship Done. thing. All right. All right. Bring this back in. All right. Now, this I'm going to make into a component called Sword. And I think I actually have. A tool called Compo Spray. Maybe I don't. So let's see if I got this installed. I did at one point. Compo spray. Okay, this may, may have to turn on toolbar. Components spray. All right. I haven't used this a whole lot, so this is the I'm fun of live stuff. This. Prepping for live stuff is, okay, perpendicular spray. We're going for perpendicular spray. Component one is sword. Uh, yeah, 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 good. Scaling one to one. Can you move it out a little bit from behind you? Oh, yeah. Thanks. All right. I'm just going to grab it exactly what it is. Shape is not available yet. Hey, or, uh, <laughs> sweet. How about now? Uh, sword, vertical edges, 50% pressure, destination layer. Can you only do it on sword? Oh, do I have to select this first? Um, yeah, I know, I was just trying to go quick and easy. I know this would be a great scatter or, yeah, fur extension, something like that. Um, I can make this a group. Does that work? What shape? <laughs> Try some context things. <gasps> Did it. Mm. Uh, well, something. something I'm not. Something. I'm not blown away by that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So apparently, So this has to be out of context, is that? Apparently I can't have that piece in there with it. That's, all right. This was, this was a thought I was thinking of and obviously this is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, there's gotta be a, 100% pressure, maybe that's it. Maintain proportions, allow mirroring, 
Allow stacking, allow collision, random rotation, yes. Keep vertical, no. Ignore hidden geometry, yes. Spray. What does that mean? Um, I'll try to go back into the group and spray it in here. This seemed to work for some reason, though I couldn't see what was actually happening. Right. Until and it wasn't it attached out. to the chair either. Yeah, there's a... Hmm. All right. Dang, I thought that was going to be a fun, easy way to do it, but uh, apparently not. Yeah, next week. Yeah. Components Here, let me try this. Fur and scatter. Good, uh, yeah, those are a bunch right, of uh, good or, uh, extensions next week. Let's try this. Like spray paint with your eyes closed, and then you have to open your eyes later and find out. You spray paint a single sword. <laughs> One more time. Spray. Now it's not. Oh. Nope. 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 Spray, please. Uh. Yeah, but Are you oh hold up. Uh, All right, so I'm th I'm figuring things out. Thing number one. My axes is not where it should be. So let's start by getting these this axes on the back, right there. Okay. That's thing number one. Let me get this back upright. I'm gonna spray. I'm just gonna just leave it like right how it was. Huh. Weird. Hmm. Are they out there somewhere? Nope. All right, um, um, I don't feel like uh, spending more time on this. <laughs> this is obviously not working right now, or uh... oops, vertical spring. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Still, it's a cool idea. Just spray on swords. Yeah, you can imagine. It didn't work out that way. I might have to spend some time this, this week trying to figure out how to do that just so we can come in and spray some swords next week. Um, it'll have nothing to do with the actual model, but sword spraying sounds like it's a thing that should probably happen at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah unfortunately. Compost spray really is a very cool tool. Um, if the tool using it knows how to use it. Um, I can say that because I'm insulting myself. Um, awesome, well, what do you guys think? What, what are we missing? Is there anything we wanna do to play with this a little bit more? Um, oops, look at that. Got some, some edges missing after I uh, went in and made this whole thing all bendy. <laughs> it's further from being 3D printable than ever before. <laughs> also looks pretty good though. Uh, texture? Yeah, let's go in here, control A. Let's see if we can grab a Cool metal. Ooh, that looks good. That little texture there. That's cool looking. It's very monolithically colored. I mean, it's, there's definitely not more to it than 
Well, that's not true. The handles had a little bit of color on them, like some of them had a little bit of gold or brass left on them, but uh, for the most part, you know, it was dragon breathed steel. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, you know. Oh, didn't, didn't problem here too. Texture and shadows and GOT soundtrack. So this person says. Soundtrack? Somebody say soundtrack? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna need to throw that on my phone because uh... it does. It does sound like a ringtone from <laughs> 2004. <laughs> I'm just gonna close up a couple of these surfaces that are real glaringly obvious. Did we ever find anybody from New York on here? Anybody's gonna? Yeah, is there anybody from uh, New York watching the stream there? Specifically the uh, greater Syracusean area? Yeah, we'll be cruising over there sometime. Christopher uh, says he prefers the theme played by cellos. But, uh, I mean, it's also good played by MIDI. Um, <laughs> Yep, I think you're probably right. Uh, I think our goal with our particular tune was something that uh, is not going to get us in any trouble. Yeah, or at least not get the video uh, copyright flagged or anything. Yeah. Hopefully. That was what we are shooting for. Just distinct lack of flagging. All right. Let's stretch this back down. Whoop. No, didn't do that right. Back inside making making edits. So some of these pieces, I wonder if uh, if I had had them, uh, if I'd blown this up bigger if I wouldn't have had this destroyed geometry. But, uh, yeah, just trying to get this so it looks a little bit nicer. Woo, that was a mess. We can fix that too, though. A couple more clicks, and then, uh, yeah, let's, let's see what some shadows look like on this thing. HBO is coming for us. Well, the White Walkers are coming for everybody. That's the bigger, the bigger issue. Got to be. That sounds like a concern. Watch out for those guys and gals. Um, White Walkers are. are uh, oh, ooh, oh, oh! Look at that shadow. Yeah, and even if the throne is copyrighted. This is not the Iron Throne. This is the Aaron Throne. That's right. I dude it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check this out. Let's let's uh, no, give me give me drama. All right, you have to get hid. Right, get rid of the axes. And I need I need dramatic lighting. Oh, there we go. Let's get that dark slider involved, dude. Yep, yep, we're going to get in there. Darkness. <laughs> the light's light, the dark's dark. Ooh, baby. Look at that thing. And that. Good. That looks... I mean, come on. What else good. can we do? That's just... Well, I'm just going to have to... I'm going to make it another 
shot in the throat, but I'll just try her on. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> smiling from the throne. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what. So I need new, need new overlay and back that is not see through, but this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that turned out pretty cool. That was that was a uh, that was pretty awesome. That's neat. Yeah, sure. Thanks for watching, everybody. Certainly. Yeah. Um, let's see. Why did you explode the sword components? Um, well, I did the big explode because I wanted to use. Uh, Fredo scale to put this sway back on the chair, get throw back there, but uh, it was having problems with groups and groups, so that's why I ended up exploding those out. Mm -hmm. So, for the extension, uh, yeah, component spray was the name of the plugin that we tried to use. I think it's listed on the store as compo spray, so you might want to look for that too. And compo. like I said, I didn't really prep for that. That was kind of I really try to keep on top of as many extensions as possible, but given that we have almost a thousand just in our store or just the extension warehouse, there's so many extensions out there, guys. And I, a lot of times I use it, figure out how to use it, and then go away for a little while, and then that information leaks out of my head or something. And I, when I come back, I can't remember quite how to do it. So um, Justin Geis from SketchUp Essentials has a video he did not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago, on compost spray. And he, he walks through all of it and makes it, shows you exactly how to use it. So um, don't be scared off by what I just did. I was messing around. It is an awesome tool. It really works well. Go check that out and uh, maybe post a, uh, if, you can, if you can make a sword spray chair, we'll call it, <laughs> uh, let us know. Um, because it, is, it really is a good tool. And I, I did not do it justice with what I just did, so. White walkers are near. <sighs> Put a dragon in the background. Yeah, that would, you know, that's actually one of the things we were talking about, because somebody mentioned, they're like, oh, Game of Thrones, we should do something related to Game of Thrones on the live stream. And that was one of the first thoughts that came up was dragon, which I really, that would have been very cool. Um, the only thing about that is that probably would have been more organic modeling, which I know you guys aren't opposed to, but we're trying to, mix it up a little bit so I figure we do some hard edge modeling um, but uh, yeah maybe maybe we'll do a dragon on a, a future show um, we got and I just want to throw this out too thank you guys very much for throwing out ideas as we do this because mm -hmm. we're always looking for more stuff to do and you know we can make stuff up all day to, to come in. There's no shortage of things that can be modeled in SketchUp, but ideas that you guys have are awesome because then, you know, it comes from you. And that's, that's a little more fun for us. Um, yeah, any, any last minute uh, ideas, thoughts, comments, concerns, quotes, quips? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I, uh, where else I go with that, but yeah, what else you guys got going on? What else is happening? Well, hey, LT Wood Products, I appreciate you showing up at the end. That's cool. In a few minutes here, we'll wrap this up, and it'll uh, it'll sh you can stream it from the beginning, so you'll be able to still see it. Mm -hmm. Model some flowers in small scale foliage. I'd be all for that too. We could do something like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right, well, like I said, unless uh, some find a crow from 3D Warehouse and put it on it. Is that a thing that happens? Did crows land on it in the show? That, uh, I'm all for it. I'm just curious. Uh, well, they do have that raven that has the, uh, the three eyes on there. All right. So, but that's different than a crow, of course. Well, I'll look for good with any blackbird. Uh, Raven's not turning out a whole lot of useful information. Let's try crow. Crow it is. Crow, one of the smartest animals. Really? Oh, look at that. Like that thing right there? Oh, it's a 2D crow. What, well, we got what about there? top left? Or top right? Or is oh. that just a photo? <laughs> oh, I was like, mad yeah. crow was the <laughs> one that I saw. Is... Yeah. 
Um, that Let's just see, looks this like looks like it could be, yeah, yeah, one material, one polygon. That's a sure sign that you're looking at a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Tips uh, for the warehouse. Yeah, that one looks okay. I want something a little more... Uh, oh. See, this guy's got shadows. That's that's a good sign. Dang. All right, let's, let's throw this thing on here. Uh. Bird box. Whoa! If you guys didn't know we were doing a crossover. It's the HBO cro Netflix crossover. Whoa. Slow down. Slow down, bird. All right, I'm going to grab him by a little, little spot in the bottom of his foot. And then, uh, oh, we are inside the component. Let's try that again. Be cool, crow. <laughs> Stop flying around. <laughs> um, let's put them right here on this. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is really big. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. We made this large. Right, we'll, get, we'll get this crow bigger. That works. Gotta add the extra eye, they said. There's a, just another eye in the middle of the forehead. Ew. It doesn't have to be uh, highly detailed. Right, I'm gonna do this. Here, we'll just uh, we'll whip up a quick sphere. Great Friday night sketch entertainment. I nice. see a 3D. Well, thanks. Uh, glad you enjoyed watching, of course. Any dragons? I'm sure there are some dragons on the 3D warehouse, so uh, oh. we will be uploading this model to 3D warehouse, so if you guys want to make some tweaks on your own, customize your throne for your own, make your own throne, then you can certainly do that and see if you can add any dragons from the warehouse if you can find them. Uh, the Eye of Ra. Ah, perhaps. I don't know. Is there a way of using lines instead of swords and then replace the lines with swords? Yeah, I mean, these yes. swords were kind of customized. Each was a little bit different, but you certainly could make a component with a line and then uh, replace the component with a sword or just edit that component, draw a sword in there or something. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, so component replacer, uh, not... A specific thing that is component placer but you can uh, select any one component and then replace it with another component so that would totally be possible that's a great idea actually a little shine on the eye there I certainly keep creepy, keeping watch over the throne. I actually should put him over here on this side because you can't really see him from here. So Does that work for everybody? I like it. Literally asking because I have no idea. So, But uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's that looks cool. That's a nice touch. Can't complain about that. Yes, random lines would be a lot easier, you're right. So you could go in and put those in there. Um, you could do that with, so if you created a component, you could go in and select the component afterwards and then replace it with swords and they would all go in. That would have been an option. I have a feeling you'd still end up going in and tweaking and, and using the move and rotate to go in and lap them and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, that would, that would be an option as well, for sure. Need to blog this. <laughs> like, you want to put it on your blog? That's cool. Or we should put it on our blog. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys spending Friday evening, afternoon, 
middle of the night for some of you where you're at. Um, coming by, hanging out. Uh, so that's that's really cool. We we like like doing this kind of stuff, but it's we only keep doing it because you guys keep showing up. So you keep showing up, we'll keep doing it. And uh, yeah, overall, just thank you so much and appreciate your time, energy, comments, and uh, we'll keep doing it. And uh, you guys keep giving us ideas. Yeah. Oh, and I want to say my mandatory well not mandatory but uh <laughs> say thank you to you aaron for of coming course. and modeling uh in front of our audience again i know i would hate to do it i would probably look like a fool and uh you managed not to so uh well and this is where, very good and it's yeah this is where i was gonna swing back and go this was the easy stuff for me matt set all of this up you guys kind of saw the stuff in here but there's all these lights and everything and mm. and uh matt's the guy who makes me look good i just i just do stuff. No, no, it's all you, man. <laughs> all right, we'll agree. It's a good partnership. How's that? <laughs> yeah. I just facilitate the content. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're certainly happy to make a thing that people like to watch. So. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. All right. Well, with that, I think we're uh, officially going to wrap. So everybody have a great holiday weekend and. Uh, We'll see you back here next Friday. Yes, we'll see you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>